Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. I'm the last podcaster. No, I'm here too. Yeah, I know. I just, but this is the new strategy where we just steamroll into it. I get the dumb fucking the stupid thing over. I with, get yeah. that over with, and then we say, "Hi, I'm Griffin. I'm David. David Sims. This Griffin is Newman. Griffin Newman. The blank check with Griffin and David. This is a podcast about directors. Mm-hmm. We're given free reign, blank checks to make whatever they want, and uh, the good and bad, yeah, uh, the ill that can come of that. Uh, this is a mini series as titled Pod Night Shamacast. Yep, great title, great mini series. Well, it that is the title. I won't. Say how I feel about it. Um, I had differing ideas. Uh, and, yeah. yeah. No, sure. This is now the the Sorry. ninth film by M. Night Shyamalan? Yeah. It's, we- it's a weird day because of Daylight Savings. Is this eight or nine? Agreed. This I'm is, all for This off. is his, uh, ooh, boy, uh, eighth movie, ninth movie? I don't know. I think this is his ninth movie. Yep. Ninth okay. Movie. This is his ninth film. It was released in 2010. Mm-hmm. It was his first adaptation. Yep. But he wrote it. Work. He, ro- he wrote He wrote it. He wrote it. Wrote, produced, directed. Yeah, because he does his classic M. Night mic drop yep. right the second the movie fucking ends. Written, directed, and produced by M. Night Shyamalan. Mm-hmm. Um, it's his first 3D movie? Uh-huh. It I, think, was, I think he copy edited it, too. He yeah, copy, copy edited. edited. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, he line edited. Yeah. Uh, this was his first Nickelodeon picture? That's true. That's true. Yeah. He's for the kids. It's the next generation. He's smart. Yeah, and I'd say, I'd say this is the first film of his that's like, well, no, because Wide Awake was a children's film. Yeah, sure. Wide Awake is a kid's film. This is his first kid's film since he became a big deal. Yeah. He makes a nasty horror movie that's rated R, and he follows it with, like, a, a kid-friendly yeah, film. The blood red R rating. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have a guest in the studio today. We do. Uh, he's already said two things. <laughs> yeah. I don't like waiting. <laughs> he's eating a There's salad. There's no repercussions to my actions. He's, he's got, eating a salad. It's got corn in it. I'm trying to yeah, see. Yeah, man. I got protein to fuck up. I got some feta cheese. <laughs> it looks like a, yeah, yeah. Corn, chicken, uh, spinach. Yeah, I go crazy. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, man, put that shit in there, man. I gotta it's a, eat it. It's a superfood. He's yeah. got uh, two cans of Coke. Yeah, well, you know what? I bought one can. I uh-huh. reached in. There were two cans in there. What? I figured one of these poor UCB improvers needed it, but I was like, fuck it. <laughs> they fucked up. They got to learn about the hardships of New York. <laughs> uh, Seton Smith is our guest today. Seton Smith. Uh, Welcome, the, sir. The great uh, comedian yeah. and actor. And, uh, former co-worker? Former co-worker, life lessons uh, teacher to yeah. the improvisers of New York City. Yeah. Uh, C- Seton and I worked together on a, on a sitcom that I was then fired from, and then Seton continued to have that job, and then the job no longer existed. That's no. a succinct version of the story, right? That's pretty much how it worked. That's pretty much how it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're, we're good friends. We, we had a, a, a month of, uh, maybe less than a month, but we, we would sit together in a car and talk about our futures together. No, it was really a nice, nice time. It was like, a we really, really nice naive. Time. Well, I was really naive. I'm not sure how naive you were, but I was. I, oh, I was I'm so I'm fucking naive. Was pretty naive. I yeah. was Pretty fucking naive. The scene yeah. used to always look at me and go, like, you're really naive. Like, yeah. even episode 12, she was like, I can't believe how naive you are. I'm like, <laughs> what, what, what don't I know? What the fuck am I missing? Everything. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, there's a, um, whole, there's a whole, you realize how uh, small you are, really, in the grand scheme of everything. But we would definitely, we'd sit in this parked car outside our hotel and, like, what convince. What car is this? It was Seton's car. I didn't oh, okay. have a car, right. so Seton okay. would drive me everywhere. Oh, yeah, I would drive him sometimes, unless he would get your driver. <laughs> You get yeah. the PA guy. You yeah, there was a PA who would drive me sometimes. Uh, Sam Stefanak would drive me. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. He's actually a comic now. He's doing like... Really? Yeah. I see that he draws a lot. He's a good artist. Uh, this is a podcast in which Seton and I catch up with people. Yeah, just people guys. I want to hear. We used to work with. Um, uh, you hear about Julian? Crazy. <laughs> Back on crack cocaine. <laughs> Back on it. When we knew him, he was on it. Yeah. He was on it. Then he, he got off. You that was that. Nice to hear. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But I got to tell you the, the sad note. At yeah. three. <laughs> Back on cocaine. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. Seton would drive me. We'd drive to uh, Urban Outfitters. Because we were like, oh, we got money for the first time. Sure. Yeah. And we would just and be you like. you time to kill, right? You're in L.A. We have yeah. lot of time to kill. We have time to kill. Yeah. yeah. If you want a drug habit, let me tell you. Charlie <laughs> okay. Sheen. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how, how, think about how functional that man. He did 24 episodes a he season. Did. He was a yeah. hard, yeah. Fucked up. Yeah. yeah. So that makes you imagine, like, how much right. how you much don't free know time is he not had. fucked up. Right. No, it's amazing. Uh, here, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> you know, I, people always go like, oh, actors are overpaid. It's like, you know, so stupid, so easy, whatever. I do think acting is tough. That hasn't been said. Being on a multi-camera sitcom is the single easiest job in history. They always say history. that, right? Yeah. Like, that's like the gig you want the most, right? It's, it's insane. Yeah. 
And if you have any experience doing like live performance, it's like all you need is just have the instincts to once a, a week be able to turn it on yeah, and just yeah, like do it in yeah. front of a crowd. Yeah. But the rest of the week, they're like, hey, these are really loose rehearsals because we're going to change the entire script in an right, hour. You're going to get thrown new pages. Yeah. So just yeah. hold the thing in your hand. I actually, what I'm really happy about, like, it's going to be nerdy for a second. It kind of not taught me how to act. It taught me how to have acting habits, yeah. which is the thing you really find for auditioning. You just go like, all right, I know when I'm going to... How many times I need to read a script and memorize shit. Right. I know uh, how to prepare. Like, I got this nice habit because I knew I was the weakest or most inexperienced guy on the set. I would wake up, like, three hours before and just I'll get high and just play. <laughs> and so I would come into the set just very just warmed up. Like, I'm ready to act. And they were like, we don't even need that much energy. <laughs> you can just sit down. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to act. Whenever y'all ready to act. Shit. You can say that I for, got nothing else to say. For 10 days. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, oh, my God. It was 10 days. Actually, you know what? I wasn't even smoking weed then. I was drinking. I actually gained, <laughs> like, I was drinking half a bottle a night. It was bad. I was, uh, I gained so much weight between day one and day 10. Uh, like, the, the wardrobe woman, I forgot her name, but yeah. she was really, like, annoyed with me. Like, she was like. Because all her work was like, undone? Yeah, because, like, I yeah. know, like, literally, the, epi- the, epi- the episode where I had to wear that green suit, the uh-huh. thighs uh, ripped. <laughs> they had to go sew it in between. I didn't. I didn't know I had a problem. In retrospect, I'm like, I had a problem. That's nah. a great way to find out you yeah. have a problem. Yeah, <laughs> but they gotta like undo your seams in between scenes. <laughs> that was a lot of liquor because the liquor was cheap as fuck too. Because it was LA, LA. It's LA. Yeah. Yeah. Is it cheap in LA? I, I, yeah. see, I've barely ever been to. See, LA. I was buying yeah. like fifty dollars bottles of bullet here, forty dollars bottles of bullet, sure, and right, there right. it was like the same bottle was like nineteen dollars. And so I was just like, yeah, all right, well, it's time to, it's time to get real. And I like, had no friends. And I was like, sit in the bottle. Yeah, and table. all this time. Yeah, if I hadn't been and fired, money. I'd be in there in the car with you telling you to stop drinking. That yeah. was the, they, no, you were getting pussy. I, I remember was, you. Well, you were getting quality yeah, pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we can't talk about that. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. No, no, my bad. We may have hit the first topic Griffin actually doesn't want to talk about. The one thing they refuse to talk about. I don't like talking about anything that makes me look look cool, remotely cool. Yeah, Mm-hmm. I'll say the most well, embarrassing. Let's, let's... Yeah, the new Asian girl every night. It was yeah. crazy. <laughs> I was like, man, yeah. you got a, you got a fetish. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect segue into Last Airbender. Yeah, perfect right? segue. Right. Yeah. right, right. So I, uh, right, that is not true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> Come on, Griff, lean into it. Lean yeah. into it. And... No, no, yeah. but but um, uh, and my Chamlin should have had an Asian fetish for this film. Uh, <laughs> this, th- that's that's sure. what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're joking about that. I did, but he sh- he should have. He needed one. Wasn't Sokka and the girl white though? Oh, hella white. Yeah, that was weird. And even, even the boy, even the boy white too. People oh, were pissed real off white about scene. how white the people were. In pretty this pretty movie. white movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you know which people aren't white? All the villains. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They're Indian. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They and, all were or, like or, from the Daily Show. They're, oh, they're, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I was gonna say they're Indian, but like they're not actually all Indian actors. Well, that's, yeah, that's the right. other offensive thing is they're all entirely different types of brown. Yeah, because it's like Cliff Curtis. He's like a Maori actor. Right. He's from New Zealand. Then Dev and Patel then is Dev like Patel is a British Indian. Right. You know, and, and then Sean Tobb is like he's he's like Iranian. Right. Like yeah. So mm. it's it's right. It's just sort of like ah, I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's just over there. Yeah, different yeah. people who are brown <laughs> in a general sense. But here's my question because yeah. I was reading about this. Like, they cast Dev Patel. Did we say the way that this is the last Airbender? Oh, yeah, we're, we're talking doing about. the last, yeah, airbender. About the last yeah. airbender adaptation of Avatar. The last, the last airbender. airbender. Um, I saw the TV show. I'm the only one in the room who saw the TV yeah. show, right? I, that's why. I, that's I've a, seen yeah. it. Like, I've seen a few episodes, but I never, I never did it. Yeah, I'm I just going to say, just put my position. I saw the TV show twice, like, back from first episode to last because it was an awesome show. I mean, that's the main reason we have you in here today. You know, I've always wanted to have you as a guest on the podcast, but I need. Need an expert of the show. The show is a perfect piece in. of art. That's that's the stance we need here because David yeah. and I can explain why this movie's bad just on a movie level. Mm-hmm. But I need you to explain to us can why we? it's bad on uh, adaptation. Yeah, level. yeah. I don't know. It's a but, little yeah. But about I want to get because I just saw like so Dev Patel who plays Zuko, right? Yes. But he was cast late, mm-hmm. and it was originally going to be Jesse McCartney, correct? Who's like a really white person, one of, like even one for of a white person, the he's whitest pretty people. White. Yeah. He's blonde, so, blue eyes, like pretty Aryan, like Hitler, uh, cream pie. And I couldn't figure this out. Like, did they then recast? Like the villains yes. around him, like they were like, oh, if Dev Patel is going to be this kid, then like everyone else should be like <clears throat> racially similar. I mean, I don't even know how. That, that is what I have gathered. Um, I, I will later in the episode, I want to save this. I know you hate it when I read stuff, but I really think this oh, is God. worth reading. Uh, someone like two years ago, right? So this was like four years after the film was released, who worked on the film anonymously in some position on the crew, mm. posted on like an Avatar fan message board. And was like, you know what? It's been like four years. Paramount's not going to sue me. 
They're Let not me just, making another... Right. Let movie. me explain to you everything yeah. that went wrong on the set of this film. Sure. And the guy has this epic rant that explains... So you'll, you'll dig that up later? Oh, please okay. dig that up. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're we're going to... Yeah. I guess, right. Let's I, want to read, I want to find that original script. I want to see if his vision was that bad in the first well, place. The guy, the guy addresses a lot of it, and, mm. and I have a few um, people I know who've worked on it, some little pieces and stuff like that. But let's, let's try to, for at least 10 minutes, talk about the movie as a movie before we try to figure out what went wrong in a production standpoint. Absolutely. Sure. So it's, it's based on... A Nickelodeon show mm-hmm. that aired like in like oh five, like something like right in the I mid two thousand. Started even earlier, right? Oh four, something. That like I don't remember. Oh five to oh eight. Oh five to oh eight. I remember computers were not as good then. That's <laughs> yeah. all I remember. Yeah. So I remember I was illegally downloading. Yeah. It was better. Yeah. It was in the early days when like torrents were just a new thing. Yeah. And you had to you had to work to get. Yeah, that was the frontier. Room. I remember. Yeah, yeah. I lived in no, England. No shit. No, I actually watched it the first time when when DVDs were getting in the mail. That's it. Oh yeah, yeah. you had it on Netflix. Right like, when you Netflix were was a new thing. Yeah, and you would you would be, like watch it and you'd just mail it back and be like, all right, come on, come you're on. You're waiting for the next four three. Episodes. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. could watch four episodes at a time. Yeah, that's how I watched Buffy. Oh god, mm-hmm. I remember when um yeah Buffy the season five. I watched that way, even though it was a horrible season with that fucking god. Whatever, keep on. I kind of like season five. Whatever. Yeah, let's let. So the the show was always, from my understanding, uh, designed to be like finite. Like mm-hmm. the guys came in and they were like, "Here's the whole story." Right. It would take it's us like, like in books, right? Right. Like it's like book one, book two. Yeah. Like there are the seasons, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like three seasons, right? Three seasons. Yeah. It was like water, fire, earth. And earth, they were like, earth, earth, "Here's fire. the whole deal. This is how much time we need to tell this whole epic tale." And mm-hmm. Nickelodeon was like. Thumbs up. Fuck yeah, like an anime. And yeah. it's like, right, anime. it's inspired by anime. It's yeah. not j- Japanese, but it's like in the same style, that serial style. Yeah, both yeah. from an art perspective and from a story song perspective, right. it was definitely very uh, influenced by sort of like old Eastern mythic storytelling. Right, and it was yeah. just really much the show was following the day-to-day of a god trying to figure out how to be a god. Right. Okay. So in his friends and their own epic arcs and stuff, it was awesome. So sure. I'm going to make you repeat this thing that you said. Right before we start recording. Oh, sure. Uh, well, the problem, okay, is that uh, these, there's two philosophies when it comes to making a movie versus a TV show, where TV shows t- tell you the day-to-day things. And right. Movies are stories that you tell your grandkids about. Mm-hmm. So the protagonist, hopefully if they live, they would tell their grandkids about this movie, but they wouldn't tell their grandkids about the TV show. Like Seinfeld tells George about his day. Right. It's the wow. guys you see at the end of the day yeah. for drinks, and you just say, like, hey, you want to hear something kind of crazy? Yeah, that what happened to you today? While, like, yeah. oh, okay. While in Rocky Six, he's walking around the tables telling people, yo, let me tell you about some shit I did in the first movie. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, because it was fucking Rocky. <laughs> it was right. It was a great like, movie. like, oh, yeah, no, I know that story. That's that movie that's great. Yeah, it was a fucking great movie. Tell me the movie again, <laughs> champ. <laughs> that's the fucking so, and that's the movie with Avatar. He tried to make a day to day story into one big, long, epic shit. So it's really like holding you hostage at a fucking party. Right. There's there's way too much happening in this movie. Wait, because I and can you tell me? Because that's what I don't know is how much of the show did he put in this movie? The whole thing. It's the whole <laughs> thing. Because I was like, did he just do like the first season? No, he didn't. No, he did like he did the first whole season. Yes, like yeah. the first. Oh, Jesus but the thing Christ. is, like it's that like twenty episodes. That or boat yeah. scene, we know he escapes the boat yeah. in the TV show. That took two hours to get there. Right. And in the movie, he got there in fifteen, 15 minutes. minutes yeah. Maybe. And so yeah. it was like you couldn't really get the scope of this village being destroyed. This big, great king kid who's suffering. Yeah. Like, the relationships never really, uh... No, none of the relationships It doesn't, work. no, because... There's so many fucking but, characters well, in it. But here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing that really was important. Um, the relationships weren't that deep in the show because the tone of the show was like a kid story. Right. There mm-hmm. once was a kid who dot, dot. Problem in this movie, they're not going with that tone of... No. They're almost going to, like, going... Like, almost Christopher Nolan. Like, what would happen in the real world? Except we don't have the budget for the real world, so let's just bring some green screen in. It's and, <laughs> and some just, green screen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just shoot it like it's a fucking ABC Family TV show. Yeah. Well, let's, let's say that. Okay, so, like, the first... I, I have not seen many episodes of the cartoon show, but I've I did... I've seen a few. I've seen the I, first few. I saw the first couple, And I just, right? like, wanted to watch more, and I was like, this is a whole thing, and I need to set some time aside to do this. Like, yeah. And I never got around I mean, to it. yeah, it's a few hours. I right. mean, because it's half hour, so I really suggest it. It's yeah, a, no, I'm going to do it. It's worth the binge. I've been told by many people. And I also want to paper over the memory of this movie yeah. like, with like the actual good show. I'd love to yeah. scrub this out of my brain. And I also, while watching this a bunch of times, I, I had this thing thought of like, oh, this would be great if it was cool. Yeah. You right. know, like while watching the movie, like, oh, I hate this, but I'd love it if it was good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's what the show would do. It's all based on these fun principles. And they learn, they, they're all stupid. In the Miss movie, it was like, 
they accepted shit way too much. Way like, too fast. They find like, him way. in like an ice ball under yeah. the, and like two seconds later, they're like, we got it. This is our best friend now, and we got to help him out, yeah. like no matter what he wants. And yeah. he's their best friend. To, like he, and he has he's a yak, and they don't talk <laughs> about it. Like they don't talk about his flying yak at all in this movie. Barely. They, barely, they yeah, they, 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 remember when they got, she got, they flew the, they got the flying yak, he escaped the boat, right? right? And he was like, all right, I got to go find this temple. And they were like, we'll go with you. And he was like, nah. He was like, no, we're going with you. <laughs> and he's like, okay, all right, all right sure, it. yeah. I'm like, what kind of fucking avatar are you, nigga? <laughs> and then, and then remember then they finally got to the temple? She was like, by the way, what's your name? You think that's what the fuck <laughs> you doing the whole flying trip? <laughs> that whole time? <sighs> Took you that long to find out? They were on a yak, right, for like six, seven hours. They could have not, they didn't talk about <laughs> nothing. <a> conversation. <laughs> just sat there in silence? This is absurd. Yeah, I was just like, this doesn't even make sense. But that's the, pop, that's the problem, right? He's squishing it. He's this, yeah, he's and it's to, not even a long movie. No, it's like it, a hundred minutes long. Movie. Yeah, no, that yeah. movie should have been like like Harry Potter and that. It should have been like seven movies. Right. If that, even if that, like, there was nothing really to bring to it. The TV show kind of did it all. Like, you really are just going to try to do a bigger epic version of the TV show. And that's, that requires way too much money. Like, I mean, right. the cartoon really went crazy. Well, I know, I know we're trying to talk about the movie itself, but it's just like so fucking stupid. It's hard. It, 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 it's, more interesting to talk about the things surrounding the movie bad, bad, than bad, actually bad go bad through. Movie. We usually try to go through the plot of the film, but it's like... I'm angry about the $4. Say? Like, I really... I'm <laughs> angry. You did HD? I did, uh, I did Amazon HD. I just did it on yeah, my TV because I, I wanted yeah. to do something else yeah. while yeah. I was doing it. Yeah. Of course. And then at first, the first 15 minutes, I wrote down funny lines. And then after that, I was like, this is, just, <laughs> this is gross. This is a, yeah, like exercise in futility. Yeah, um, I'd rather watch a Trump rally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I told I told you guys this right before we started recording, but this was uh, like the first movie I auditioned for. It's crazy. Mm. I like dropped out of college and came to New York. And Seton and I have the same agent, but it was at the time he was an assistant at an agency, and I had like met with him at a diner. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to drop out of college, and he was like, Okay, I I want to figure out what it's like to have a client. Let's like try this together. Wow. And this was like I. I um, I, I believe it was literally the day after I flew back here to New York where I grew up. And it was like, okay, we have an audition scheduled for you the next day. Wow. And it was this. Maybe two days later. But it was like the first thing. And my sister had watched the cartoon show. My sister's younger. And um, so I like bought the DVD of the first volume that was just like the first three episodes or whatever. And watched that with her. I was auditioning to play Soka. Soka's the the brother? Yes. Yeah. The yeah. Jackson Rathbone right. plays him. Now yeah. in the cartoon show, that character is... Funny. He's like yeah, the, right. comic, he's the relief. comic relief, right? He's like the sort of bumbling clod, right? He's actually the best character in the show because, uh, I'm sorry, I've eaten, sorry. No. Uh, the best episode because uh, each season he actually grows. Like he, sure. he starts off as like this weak, funny character, and then it, like the last episode he grows into this man mm-hmm. who like like leads the fucking army. It's really like a beautiful thing to watch. Sure. I like it if I was going to do the movie. I'm sorry. Go Again, ahead. the advantage of a TV show. You yeah. can build an arc, Slowly. you know? Yeah. yeah you yeah. can develop yeah. someone, tell a whole story about and if, their if life. if you're doing sort of broad, unsubtle story time, what we were saying is like it's a kid show and it's mythical and it's sort of like, you know, broad strokes and whatever. But if you're going slowly like that, you can still build up emotional connections to the characters. Whereas if the characters are this broad and like 17 things are happening per minute, yeah. it's just white noise. Um, but but so at the time when I at least when I auditioned and I had like three pages to read because the script was under lock and key. This is what I knew. Right. I watched the thing. I was like, OK, this guy's the funny guy. I can stand here and say funny stuff. The audition sides I had were mostly him making jokes about what was going on. Mm-hmm. Not right. in like a wisecracking yeah, way, right, but right. like he was the character who called out the reality so the audience could relate to this crazy world. And being like, what's that flying yeah. dog thing? Right. Yeah. Like yeah. jokes like that, right? And it was like, okay, so that's like the tone of the thing, I guess, this and that. And I just watched the cartoon. I was like, this seems pretty connective. The first 15 minutes of this movie are like, direct translation of the first 15 minutes of the first episode Yeah, in a way where I knew he was trying to adapt the whole first season. And I was like, well, there's no way you're going to catch up with this because you're going like, well, so it's the thing where he like was writing on a sign and the letters were big and then yeah. they had to start making yeah, then the letters really small. making the letters yeah. smaller to fit them all in. That's, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like, I think like it shows you how much of a genius Christopher Nolan is mm-hmm. and that like he understood, like you take the elements and not the actual right. story. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm thinking about like when he did, this whole last three Batman movies, like he didn't just take one comic and just transcribe it. He had to like yeah. combine 15 different stories. I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. male of symphony. This is a, a different medium. And if you're going to make it work, you got to like adapt it and, and change the story and not just try to do the, uh, the same thing. But um, oh. when I was auditioning, what they were saying was the plan was they were going to make uh, three movies 
the plan at the right. onset. And they said that out, out loud. You know, like, but, Shyamalan keeps talking about he's going to make a second one. But the original plan was, and this was two yeah. years before the movie came out, so I think it stopped and started a few times <laughs> between uh, when I auditioned and when it actually came out. Yeah. Um, their plan was they were going to make it Lord of the Rings style, and they were going to shoot three movies at the same time. Like, they were going to commit whole hog to the big picture. Right. And he had, like... I don't know if he had written all three scripts, but he had it blocked out of like how he was adapting all three movies. Ooh, I can see that. That makes sense. It's a horrible idea, but it makes sense. <laughs> right. Lord of the Rings was the one case where that worked, but like it, you know, it's crazy that it worked. Yeah. And the whole thing there was they saved money making those movies because they made all three at the same time. Like if the first one had bombed, they would have gone bankrupt as a company. But once they worked, because they were able to, like, build these sets and then keep them for two years and have all the actors under one contract, they, like, saved money. So this movie cost $150 million. Right. The original plan was to make three at once for $250 million and release them, like, one a year. Um, and then I think everyone sort of got cold feet about it. Sure. They were a little freaked out about it. I think there Wisely. was this whole thing of, like, you know, once you're at that kind of budget, you can't just be making a movie for kids. You have to make something that, like, grown-ups and teenagers want to see, too. And that whole Christopher Nolan tone thing, I think, came in with them being like, we got to make it seem more badass so, like, yeah, teenagers don't— Dark Knight comes out 08, around yeah. when they're making this. Yeah, And they don't want to, like—like, like, you have Nickelodeon stamped on the thing. And a lot of, like, cynical 17-year-olds are going to be like, I want to fucking watch a Nickelodeon movie. Even less 17-year-olds, but, like, 26-year-olds. What's your audition story? Or do you not have an? It was just that when I auditioned, the character was funny. Oh sure. Did in you, a way that did is... you meet Knight. I didn't. No, no, no. Um, okay, but so the opening, the opening fifteen minutes of this film, we should just note they cast Jackson Rathbone, who's like twenty eight. Yeah, he's yeah, supposed to be that like was a teenager. Really wrong. Yeah, it was like. Yeah, and well, he's like the ninth lead from Twilight. Like that's all he is. Plays Jasper. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, the reason I brought up the audition thing was it was a that they were trying to make all three at the same time, right. and b that the script seemed fundamentally different at the time I auditioned. Yeah. So like a lot of shit changed. You know. But, like, when I auditioned, I was like, oh, this seems like that cartoon show. This seems like right. the right sort of idea. Um, first 15 minutes are, like, just the first episode. Done almost, like, minute for minute. Mm, yeah. They're in... Uh, They're in the water village. The, the, the ice town. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, this is the one section of the movie that I think actually looks kind of epic and expensive. Yeah. Yeah. They're, like, in this crazy ice environment. It doesn't look CGI. It looks like they really flew them to some place and dropped them off in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, no, I, I it, it, it was a waste of time, but it was there. We were there. <laughs> it's like the prettiest part of the movie. It looks, it looks like a movie. Yeah, they shot in Greenland. Yeah, and then mm. guess where they shot after that? Philadelphia. Yep. Mm. Uh, he never, he never. Yeah. All of M Night's movies are shot in Philadelphia. M Night's like obsessed with Philadelphia. This is the first of films that isn't set in Philadelphia. Mm. Well, he wants to be Woody Allen. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, every director wants to have like their things, right? I mean, like. I don't know. I've uh now that I'm uh, in the system and then out of the system again. Like I had this whole when I was a filmmaker in college, I had this perception of filmmakers as like these holy creatures. Mm -hmm. And now that I work in the system, I'm like, I just it just seems uh, I can't talk shit. Hold on, I got I got to get work. One these day. are just people uh, just uh, trying not to get that's fired. What Griffin does yeah, every week. they're yeah, just human beings. Right they're all that's, human that's beings. The it's just yeah. like they're just yeah. I mean, but I mean, also think like yeah, you're right. I want to see what happened. How these things fucked up? Because you're right. Like most people are capable of making a shit. He knows how to tell a story. So it almost goes like he told the story a few times, so he knows how to tell a story. So he, something else had to have gone. Yeah, yeah. Maybe what? it was the scale of it. He's never worked on this scale before, right? Okay, should I just read this fucking thing I found? Oh, geez. Yeah, let's just do that. I want to know, like, what, I wanna know yeah. what happened, and then we, I can react off that because I, uh, I, I, I really, I was late to this podcast because of how bad this movie was. I was passive aggressive of me. <laughs> uh, I was like, man, fuck this motherfucker. Wasting my whole <laughs> Sunday I'm doing drugs. <laughs> Um, so, so this, this uh. was the company story, right? Right. M. Knight's daughter was a fan of the show. Yeah, right, right, right. And she they wanted watched to dress up together, as the character for Halloween. He right. watched it and he was like, this is really interesting. He was at a weird point in his career. He had sort of like fallen into made this a bunch rut. Of shit. And he yeah. made it weirder. Right. Yeah. right. And he made it weirder. But he saw it and he felt like, this is how he tells it. He had this sense of like, this could be like a Lord of the Rings style, like epic mythology franchise thing. And went to Paramount, went to Nickelodeon. And the show was successful, but it wasn't like SpongeBob where it like transcended generations and it was so clear that it had entered the public psyche where it was like huge name brand thing. It was a show with a very committed audience, but you're also dealing with yeah, like yeah. a lot of kids who might grow out of it and then the adults okay. are like whatever, right? So he goes to Paramount and he's like, I want to make three movies, $250 million. 
And there was a lot of back and forth where they were like, this is a big risk. You're coming off of two big flops. The one before that was successful, but everyone hated it. Like, you know, what? Uh. so there's all this sort of finagling. And then he um, cast uh, f- four white actors. Mm-hmm. Um, then Jesse McCartney drops out because of uh, scheduling conflicts with a concert tour. Okay. And he cast Dev Patel and uh, Slumdog had like just come out. Right. Like it, he was the guy. And then they recast everyone else. I don't know if they'd cast the other parts, but they recast they cast the, villains the rest around, of the fire tribe around all him. around him. Right. So they all looked like him, which then creates, like, and, and once again, looked like him. Not people of his no, ethnic we understand. background, right. but just people who vaguely looked like him. There's um, not a lot of Indians working and in, in acting, so. Right, right. That was a, that was a handicap. Yeah. <laughs> Then this is the first movie. He's an Indian American. He, the first movie he's made with Indians, basically, since his debut. Since his debut, which he was the lead in. Which his was first like a movie student film, It's called Praying with Anger, and it's M. Night Shyamalan going to India to try to reconnect with, like, the, a sense of his father. I remember reading about that. Was it good? Nope. No, no. You know, yeah, but, you know, it's, not, it's better than this movie. You know what? It is. Who's the editor on Sixth Sense? Because I bet you he has a good-ass editor who quit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause like, you know, uh, look 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 up. Steven Spielberg, remember Jaws wasn't good and the editor came in there, that chick came yeah. in and cleaned it up. Maybe he has a good cleanup hitter. Something happened. Okay. So this is from a last airbender message board, like a fan message board. And the guy writes production wrap five years ago. So I don't think Paramount's going to care. They know it bombed. Right. Cause he was like hinting at the fact that it stories from the set and they were like, come on, tell me. It's like, I don't know. The confidentiality. Sure. Okay. What it came down to was M. Night really was the only one who knew the show and what he was doing. The first draft of the screenplay, gorgeous. Hence Brikey giving him the okay, who I guess was whoever greenlit it at the studio. The producers who are actually in charge of at least 80% of production, including casting, not so much. They clearly never bothered to watch the show, nor had the ghostwriter who did the final screenplay. Oh, shit. Damn. He doesn't have a lot of clout at this point, right? Mm. Like, they're giving him a big, big budget, and his last couple movies are flops. Oh, fuck. It took it away from me. Nicola... Nicola, whatever her name is, who who plays um, Katana. Yeah, well, she's the daughter of, like, a really rich person, right? Was hired because she's the daughter of someone one of the producers owed a favor to as Hollywood loves its nepotism. Her father oh, like a, is a billionaire, right? Yeah, he's like a financier. I was reading about her. I, it's funny because Shyamalan said, like, I cast her because... I've never seen a young actor this good since Haley Joel Osment. Like, I had to have her in my movie. Like, his, he, he his gave quote some, was, yeah. he did a lot of press for this movie, too. Yeah. Like, he didn't, like, oh, I guess I fucked it up. I got to back off. Like, he was front and center doing, like, Kids' Choice Awards, getting slimed. Like, he was fucking doing it. But he said in interviews, he was like, when I saw her audition, I said, I can't make this movie without this actor. I refuse to make it unless I can cast this person. She's the only choice. And the only time I ever said that otherwise was Haley Joel Osment. Now, I think nepotism in Hollywood is kind of like uh, a bullshit often because it's it's a money driven industry. And like people don't care if your dad is whoever, if you're not going to make the money. And there are a ton of unsuccessful actors who are the children of huge movie stars who have middling careers that I think are testaments to that. Right. Um, I'm going to uh, disagree with a little, little thing of uh, I don't think it's a money driven industry. I disagree. I think it's a love driven industry. Uh, Chris Rock said it best in a sense. He was, uh, he said, and I love this quote. He was like, "This isn't a real business. Like, if you put in your, if you make double the that you put into the movie, mm-hmm. that's not a real profit. Your shoes cost four dollars to make. They charge you eighty four dollars. That's a real profit. <laughs> this is a job of love. That's we true. are. Li- I mean, this is now. I'm adding to the point. Yeah, we're jesters. We're still court jesters. We're just yeah. overpaid court jesters. But we're really still only dancing the one percent because they're the only ones that can afford to make these movies. And yes, I mean the, the middle class of the world. They get to give money to us a little bit, but. I mean, we're not appealing to them. We're appealing to them. I'm, I, and some of these movies depressing. don't make any money, yeah. like yeah. such as The Last Airbender. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? That, yeah. That, yeah. That billionaire daughter's in there for a reason. Well, She's let me, in let there me, for a yeah, reason. Yeah, that's, sure. that's, that, that's the point I want to correct is like uh, I, we, I, everyone who does it at the level that we do it does it because we love it because otherwise we do anything else that's easier and has Absolutely. a clearer path to success. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. We love it. And we're also broken people who don't know how to do anything else. We're fucked at this point. Right. Fucked. fucked. But, like, at an executive level, those people just want to make money. Like, the people who are putting the stamp down and going, yes, M. Night, you can make this, you can't make this. In the sense that they want to make money for the company because their job is to not get fired. Absolutely. no, no I, crazy I, turnaround. I agree on that. I just simply, right. yeah, I, I just don't understand how they feel that way. I'm wondering where it comes from. I know where it comes oh, it's from. Insane. 
It's just like weird how it's a fear, and then it just like metastasize yeah. into like being your entire raison d'etre. Yeah, and being an artist now, I realize how much if you man, if you make decisions based off fear, how much it fucks up your art every time. Oh yeah, you never make anything good when you go. Oh, maybe we shouldn't. When you say when you start saying that, just give up because you're done. It's not gonna be good. Whatever well, you do, it's not gonna be good. And I've been saying <laughs> the last couple of weeks on the podcast, there's this turning point that I think happens like late in the water, but definitely is in effect with the happening. Where like M Night used to be the guy who makes scary movies. And then he becomes the guy whose movies seem scared. Like, he seems terrified yeah, the, by the choices he's making. This movie seems a little scared. Very uncertain, yeah. you know? I yeah. agree with that. Um, yeah, her you gotta father... Stop, go ahead. You gotta stop doing things right. You gotta do things yeah. just bold. Go ahead. We just got have fucking instincts, you know? Because that's, yeah. like, whatever got you where you were in the first place was whatever innate instincts you have rather than, like, you know, didactically thinking through it. There's a reason why crazy people are successful in this business because they look at fear... Differently than the rest of us. Yeah. They see fear and go, <laughs> yeah, and let's giggle. do it. Right. Yeah, right. look at all that fear. Yeah. I think he's like that a little bit. I think yeah. so too, yeah. Um, you have to be to be like, give me tw- 250 million bucks, I'll make you three movies. Like, this yeah. is going to work this out. It's like a promise. miserable right. fucking life. But yeah. to that point, when you're asking for $250 million and the head of Paramount's like, hey, uh, this guy's got a lot of money. His daughter wants to be in the movie. Yeah. You want to make it work? Let's some, make it work. Some nigga. kind of handshake deal. I mean, they said yeah. it was a favor, but it also might have been some sort of thing where, like, well, he pitched him with the well, budget wait, or whatever. Fin- finish your okay. thing. Finish your well, thing. Well, I, I want to make one more point, too. Who gives a fuck? Like, I really honestly, yeah, I'm on I his know. side. I mean, like, especially if they're good. Whatever. I mean, she's not good, if she's but nobody's mediocre, good. Like, yeah. like, literally, like, what's 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 so important? Like, artist, I mean, well, artistically, sure, but, but fuck he, it. We're all going to die. Here's the point <laughs> they're getting to. Oh, agreed. 100%. We're all going to die. I agreed, see. We are all going to die. She's still around, that actress. It's not like she just vanished. She's, like, on Bates Motel and she was the the young female lead in uh, Transformers Age yeah. of Extinction, who the guy has to argue he's able to fuck because of Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, I know. Have well, you seen yeah. that movie? Yeah. Uh, this is the, no, I only saw one this of the, the Transformers. fourth one. Is it good? Uh, no, no, it's not good. No. Uh, she plays Mark Wahlberg's daughter, and he finds out she has a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. The, oh, God. Can I just sidebar with this quickly? Please. All right. Transformers All right. Age of Extinction. Why are you rushing through this podcast? Where do you got to go? Because <laughs> I know how long these podcasts I like sidebars, take. too. Uh, Transformers Age of Extinction, right? <laughs> Mark Wahlberg uh, was supposed to have had this daughter when he was in high school, which is not correct because she's 20 and Mark Wahlberg's like 47, right? Okay. But the idea is prom night. Before prom night, she was his high school girlfriend was pregnant with this girl, Nicola Peltz, and died Man, I in labor. about all this. Yeah, right. And so Mark Wahlberg doesn't allow her to have a boyfriend. Single dad doesn't let her have a boyfriend. Because he's like, if you have a boyfriend, you're going to die before and your prom night. And also he's an inventor. He's an inventor, of course. He's oh, a Texan inventor played by Mark Wahlberg. He's an insane person. Who's supposed to be uh, like 34 years old within the reality of the film, right? And he doesn't want his daughter to date anybody because then he's afraid she'll die before prom night. Wow. And then she finds out, he finds out that she has a secret boyfriend. When like the robots start attacking and they all have to like, he comes to rescue her and then they all up in a car together. And he's like, wait a second, how old are you? And he's like, oh, I'm uh, 24. And he's like, fuck it, Romeo and Julie. And I, oh, no, he doesn't say Romeo and Julie. And he goes, fucking illegal. I'm going to have you arrested. You're fucking my daughter. She's underage. And the guy opens up his wallet and takes mm-hmm. out a, a laminated, laminated card. card with the laws, the Romeo and Juliet la- laws that state that even if a person is underage, if they are consenting and the other person is within five years of their age, it's legal. Ew. Yeah, and Michael Bay has scene. like a fucking 15 second close up of Ew. fine legalese like print on a laminated car mm-hmm. saying like, mm-hmm. this is why it's okay for this guy to oh, fuck this 17 year old. That's gross. So yeah. that's where her career is at now. Yeah. yeah. She's that character. The, here's, you said, why does it matter? Nicola was hired because she's the daughter of someone one of the producers. Oh, if it, nepotism, her audition tape was subpar at best. In having to cast her, they had to cast a guy who could pass as her brother, hence Jackson. Oh, I see. So because okay. she was the first piece, the cast started becoming whiter because they Boy. had to cast around her. No, but they also cast Agreed. Well, uh, this little you know kid because he had like a hit Korean like martial arts video that he like sent yep, in. Yeah, but he's totally white. Right. His audition was actually pretty funny. He's a funny guy. Clearly, I'd seen the show. Too bad the producers felt the movie didn't have time for intentional humor oh, and sure. cut all of that out of the script. Mm. Noel was the only one who was honestly openly auditioned and was chosen based on talent. He just needed extra help acting because with a lot of it being green screened, he was talking to air a lot of the time. Right. That's the kid who plays Ong. He plays the main character. Yes. And he was basically cast because he could do all these martial arts. He had a shaved and head. And he shaved his head and he drew an arrow on it. Hey, and he did that's a how you get a fucking role. That's, that's how you get a role. Right. That's you how you get a role. You fucking dressed apart, man. Leave yeah. no imagination. Give a fuck. He and, did it. And dude, lesson actors. Dude, super Caucasian, but kind of. He's got a funny face. He's got I don't a know funny how else face. To put it. 
that's the thing. Like, he's like, he's one of those actors who in 1940 they would have cast to play every different ethnicity. He has these, like, cheeks. He's these sort of chubby cheeks, and it kind of, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to describe him. He is sort of funny looking. Uh, if you recall, they initially signed on Jesse McCartney as yeah. Zuko. Why? Because otherwise the lead actor roster would be starring two unknown kids you've never heard of and that guy who played a minor character in Twilight. So Jesse McCartney was supposed to be the name in the cast. And someone with a brain realized, wait a minute, this show is kind of anime-esque and we're hiring a bunch of white kids. So what do they do? It's a, it took them that long to get that in. Okay, go They'd ahead. They'd already announced he'd been cast and everything. Because they couldn't can Nicola without someone being really ticked, Jesse willingly bowed out and went with another project offered at the time. Which I think might have been a movie I was in with him. Uh, even still... Does you want to say that since one day, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Might have been the movie with him. I don't remember. Because, no, because I was uh, working with him, and he was like, "Yeah, I wish I could have done it. It was a great script, but uh, you know, just uh, recording my new album." And I was like, "But then, why are you here? Why are you in this movie with on me? an indie where you what don't movie? have your own dressing room? But where the Gonzo is a high school movie." Oh yeah, sure. I gotta learn how to bullshit better. I'd be telling too truthful shit. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe he kept that up even on the set of Beware the Gonzo. Wow, I, look, I'm not accusing a lot. I don't right, know. Whatever. Timeline might be wrong. Whatever. Even sure. still, they so needed they cast Dev Patel. They She's needed a, another yeah. name. They couldn't be another white kid. Dev Patel. Th- this guy misidentifies it. Just given Oscar winning performance, which he wasn't even nominated. No. So to say on, they had to, uh, getting him. They had to match the rest of the Fire Nation, which is why I turned to heroic white kids versus evil brown people. And then it was horribly budgeted. The opening, all nice and pretty in Greenland, cost big bucks. And then they realized with a story about people manipulating elements that couldn't believably be done in camera with practical effects, they had to rebudget and give most of the money to ILM for post-production. Wow. So they, like, while shooting, realized we don't have the money to shoot the things we want to shoot because we have to allocate that money for later. Every set is crazy. I mean, it's all green screen, but it's like you got to be in, like, an ice temple. You got to be in a fireboat. Like, everything's, like... Yeah, but uh, we've been doing movies long enough. We could you fake that, and then you could plan. To, of course, fucking yeah. student film people can make a fucking ice temple. Look but you gotta, you gotta plan. Look at it, right? you, gotta like, plan. you gotta, you gotta plan ahead. Right. Didn't fucking be in the middle of a second. Go, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you go from the beautiful SWT, which I guess is where they were in Greenland, uh-huh. to everything looking dingy because everything else was shot in Pennsylvania. Right. The Fire Nation Royal Palace and old high school in Philadelphia. That's crazy. <laughs> they like converted this high school and put fucking green screens up to like then later on add. You barely pillars. see it. It's I know. just some pillars, right? Parts of the Earth Kingdom, Reading, Pennsylvania. Everything that was uh, not the NWT was some sets built in front of a giant green screen, old empty aircraft hangar, the outskirts of Philadelphia. Island was rushed despite most of the movie being l- left up to them. You had novice directors hired by producers to oversee that process. That's how come the Pebble Dance happened. Sadly, I don't even know what that's referencing. The pebble dance? Yeah. Uh, isn't that the bit in the Earth Nation where they're kind of like lobbing pebbles at each other? Oh, I, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Uh, sadly, at that point, M. Night was just tired of arguing with the overheads, gave up, and collected his paycheck. If you look at the movie's premiere and red carpet footage, you can tell his excitement and happiness is fake. Bright had a little say in the film, despite being listed as executive producers. Uh, that title, uh, is that supposed to be Kathleen Kennedy? Is that what they mean by Bright? I don't know. No, that's, uh, that's like the people, the Avatar people, the oh, creators gotcha. of yes, the show. Oh, cool. Uh, that title was a fancy way of saying they created the show and it was based on this and that. Uh, the actual producers who were Kathy Kennedy and, and Frank Marshall uh, didn't know what they were dealing with. They're only interested in Quick Buck. Bright and M and I gave up on the film for the same reasons. Other people working on the film were paying to deal with Nickelodeon themselves only wanted the final product as quickly as possible and the money would presumably make them. And then the last sentence is, at least they hired good caterers. The food was great on that set. Hey. That's, and that's important, though. Like, yeah. You put some good food on a set, <laughs> you can tolerate a lot of bullshit. Yeah. So that's uh, really depressing, right? It is. It's a sad story. It's, like, super, super depressing. And it it's sounds not like, surprising. It's not surprising. It sounds like he really did want no, to I do it, it and, and right. probably had... I Look, the guy says first script was gorgeous. I don't know if it was gorgeous. But I, I bet know, you it was. I know having read the first two pages of the fucking script... it was script, more faithful. It, it was like, a little better. felt fundamentally like a film that what, would be fun to what watch. What producer just says, ah, you know what, this movie doesn't need humor? Like, what, what kind of a decision is that to make? Okay, so I went back and read some Vulture interviews with him from the time of the release of the film, because I was like, oh, they're saying he was defeated by the time he was promoting. Is that true? And they mm-hmm. said, you know, talk about the difference in tone. And he went, well, the show is really, like, slapsticky. Like, it has a lot of broad comedy in it, and I felt like that's more for kids, and it wouldn't work within this context. Mm-hmm. But it feels like, to me, they hired the DP who shot Lord of the Rings for this Andrew movie. Andrew Lesney. Right? Yeah. This is coming off the Christopher Nolan boom of, like, everything's got to be gritty and realistic and sure. literally dark. Um, they also had this plan to do, like, here's a big epic story in advance. We could do three films. Fuck it. Let's do one at a time. But the plan is still this movie is kind of one third of a story. And it even starts with, like, there's the opening title and then it says book one, water. And if you haven't watched the cartoon show, you're like, book one? What, the fucking, what are you talking about? It's paid full ticket price for a movie. I'm only getting one book? What are you talking about? Um... 
But I think. But that's Lord of the Ringsy. I yeah. think once they put that money into it, they got scared and they were like, "We have to make sure this is as not kiddish as possible, so that it doesn't just appeal to Nickelodeon fans." So in right. doing that, they were like, "Let's take anything that's fun out of this movie." You know, but the the movie's not violent. No, like it's not like anything crazy happens, right? Like because they can't go. It's a PG movie. It's rated yes. PG. Mm-hmm. So like I mean, they say Asif Manvi dies at the end. Someone says like he died, he's and I'm like he got like hit with like water. a water jet. He's in a like water is he, he's dead. I didn't get that. Far. <laughs> I don't fucking remember. You gave up on this movie. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. yeah. I, but, I remember. I remember the cartoon. I kept going up. Oh. Like I just go. I don't know. I just. The, the, the angles and the ang- of the cameras was like, you're not even trying. It seemed like yeah. no. they weren't even trying to make a good shot. I mean, he, he blocks every single fight the exact same way. Yeah. Like, yeah. the novice director thing makes sense. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's probably the executive. Like, he's, I got, when I hear uh, jo- uh, George Lucas talk about making Star Wars, he said he's felt more like an executive more than a director. Yeah. Because he was just, just a lot of deleting. Like, I, yeah, you direct that, you direct that. I think he'd always been hands on because his films weren't really effectsy. You know, they're very practical and they're actor based. You know, even the horror films are like the horror comes from the angle of the camera, the exactly. shadow of the person. It's things that you can deal with that are tangible on set. Right. And then this, I think, was a lot of delegating with like special effects teams and right. second unit directors. Yeah, that's something else. And these huge productions. And then jobs. also, if you're fucking two weeks into filming and they're like, oh, M. Night, we just realized we can't use these six locations you wanted. Mm. Like, we were going to fly from Greenland to like New Zealand or whatever and film there. And now we have to use a, a fucking. What, what are we using? He goes, I don't know. I know a good high school in Philadelphia. We could film there. You know, I think the guy's just losing his Man, mind while he's filming you, it, trying not to have a breakdown. Well, and like you say, like, they had to get it out, and at a certain point, it was like, okay, all right. Woody like, Allen's a fucking genius. Because like, <laughs> he knows... He, well, he knows not to make The Last Airbender. Yeah. yeah, he just knows how to just go, like, no, nah, I'm not going to make those big-ass movies. Stop stressing me out. Give me a few dollars. Leave me alone. Right, right. You know, I heard the coolest thing about him, that he... uh he figures out where he wants to have vacation the next summer, and that's where he shoots the next movie. Yeah. Just, yeah. I yeah. love that. that is you know what's another thing Woody Allen does? I know Woody Allen's a very controversial figure, but inarguably, he has never made The Last Airbender. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he like, definitely you he avoided that. argue with And it's that. a long career of it's a not long making career. The Last he Airbender. There. He had many chances to make The Airbender. <laughs> he yeah. He really. makes a movie a yeah. year. Yeah. Um, like, with that kind of odds, every, almost anyone would make The Last Airbender. But he knows, like, actors want to work with him. All sure. actors who work with him agree to do it for scale. So his budgets are small, and he's able to get, like, eight big actors, and then he goes to foreign financiers, and he's like, I got eight big actors. And they're like, great, we'll give you the money. He picks the place where he wants a vacation. He always has a script ready to go, so he can start as soon as the last one finishes. He also really smartly, this is the thing that other people don't do, he fucking budgets in from the beginning, like, three weeks of reshoots. Huh. Mm. I didn't know that. Because he's like, I do not trust myself to not fuck this up the first time. Yeah, yeah. And so there are tons of times where, like, he's uh, Purple Rose of Cairo was originally supposed to be Michael Keaton playing the Jeff Daniels part. Michael Keaton, one of my absolute favorite actors of all time. He was coming off this, like, heat. Everyone wanted Michael Keaton, cast him in the role, and then was like, this guy's way too modern. This movie takes place in, like, the Great Depression. Michael Keaton's innately a modern guy. Yeah. And it wasn't working for him. So he was like, I'm sorry. You're Three out. weeks of footage cut out, and he had the budget to start over the movie from scratch and cast Jeff Daniels. Uh. And similarly, there was a thing with Diane Weist, Bullets Over Broadway, where, like, first three weeks, the performance wasn't working. That movie. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I, I think I don't know this character. I can't do this. You should just fire me and hire someone else. And he's like, what if we just start it over? And you just come up with a different take. Start it over. She wins the fucking Oscar. Wow. God. But M. Night <laughs> was on a moving train that he couldn't. Like stop, sure. and yeah. he couldn't steer in a different direction. I think money, yeah, money destroys art. I think like like even in comedy, like once you start doing arenas, it's it's not funny anymore. Yeah, once you start doing big budgets, like a big budget comedy, yeah. it's gross. Well, you're because um, you're just trying to manage too many things. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about my own career now. Uh, <laughs> Go right ahead. I had to leave this fucking conversation for the, the movie. I was like, well, how can this affect me? How can yeah. I learn? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, there is that thing where it's like, okay, Nickelodeon ha- it has their own like opinions. Yeah. Paramount has their own opinions. They want to have a Lord of the Rings. They weren't doing that well at the time. M. Night's trying to do this own thing for his career. He's got Kenny Marshall who did like fucking Indiana Jones and Jurassic Park. And they're coming and being like, this could be another big franchise Mm -hmm. for us. And there were all these expectations of like when you're saying not just like, oh, we hope we can make sequels if this one does well. Mm -hmm. But this is part one of a three-part story. And this movie does not really function unless we make the other two parts. Then everyone's so worried the whole time. That I think like all risk goes out of the proposition because it's like we just got to fucking protect our dollar. And I even think oh, 
fuck, can I find this quote? So the movie's an hour and a half, right? Yeah. Hour 48. Hour 40, yeah. But 10 minutes of credits. Really? I, oh, I, is that many? I clocked this. Yeah, it's actually 10 minutes of credits. Mm. And um, we're, with a lot of effects, they do like a lot of like bending yeah, no, I over was the looking, credits. Yeah, you're right. Not yeah. abandoned. Um, but uh, the cartoon show is what? I mean, it's like a, how many episodes of the first season? It's fucking long. Uh, 13 or 26, one, one of those kind of numbers. Right. So it's like, it's like multiple hours. 22, yeah, 22 yeah. episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like eight hours or something like that. Yeah. Uh, at least. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of story there and he decided to like, you know, rather than you're already going to have to condense it a lot to make one film. He makes it into an hour and a half. Film. It's already seven samurai on the good side. It's already, <laughs> right. It's already going to be three and a half. You right. know, it's already going to yeah, be. Yeah. 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 Which like, you know, Roger Ebert always famously said no good movies too short and no bad movies, or, no, no good movies too long and no bad movies too short. Okay. Like there are people who are like, oh, I don't want to fucking watch a three hour movie, but that movie's great. You want to watch a three hour movie? Interstellar, I watched twice day one. That shit was. You wild. saw it twice day one. I saw it on Dude, the plane. I'm right there with you. And then I landed. You and I landed. Like, you got yourself I, to a movie theater. No, I landed. I got my girlfriend. I was like, I have a, my, my house is great. With my, I have a great TV. So I was like, girlfriend, we're downloading this. We're watching this right now, and we watch it. And it was just as good, if not better, the second time. Absolutely. That movie moves. I nigga. love Interstellar. It love Interstellar. That and Million Dollar Baby moves. It's like that. Whenever like the. So I, I agree with you what you're saying completely. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter how long a movie is. Right, it just needs to get you into it. It needs to have the right energy. Yeah, top five had that same editing, even though it's a shorter movie. But that ble- I like bleeding. You know, where like the sound first you hear the sound, then they cut. It's, it's always like, what's going on? You know what I'm talking about? Can I tell another sidebar story? Oh my, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So Seed and I were on the sitcom. We were like, oh, we're gonna be big stars. Everyone was like, huge. big stars, and we were talking about like which lines we were saying we we're gonna be on t-shirts and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> sitting in a parked car outside a hotel. <laughs> Being like, we got to like brace ourselves because that was the first day. Do you remember the first day where they did the sexual harassment seminar? Oh, uh, three hours sexual harassment seminar. I just had to do that twice because we knew for Fox too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and, and the NBC. This was we were on a show for NBC. NBC passed on it, yeah. and then Fox picked it up, and then we're like, no Jews, and kicked me out. That's not even true. They hired a different Jew, but no, I, I. They were like, no, no Griffin, no. and then you continued doing it on Fox. But um, yeah. they we had this sexual harassment seminar where like they were going through the list of all the stuff. And they were like, you know, this and that, this and that. If you say this, you'll be sued. If you make a joke, like, they were like, so Griffin, if you were to say an inappropriate joke to Seton, but there was a crew member on set who overheard it, even if it wasn't directed towards them, they could sue us as a company for creating a hostile work environment. Mm. Yeah. And one of us was like, but what's the chance of that actually happening? And they were like, it's going to happen. You're like leads on a big sitcom. It's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I was completely like, I was really down to fuck one of the extras. Like, that was my dream. (laughs) I was about to do, yeah. but that shit ruined it. I couldn't even, I was like, I'm going to get sued. But I remember we sat in the car after that, and we were like, they're like telling us that everyone's going to try to sue us now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just became that level of whatever where people are going to be trying to extort money out of me. Yeah, we're tired um, now. That shit was, that reminds me when I was like, when I first went to Howard University in 2000 in Washington, D.C., it was right before white people started moving into D.C. Mm-hmm. So I was, it was like on that, it was still violent. It was fun. For, for freshman orientation, they would just sit us in this room. They're like, "Listen, they they would point that street right here that's adjacent to our our this building. If you walk down there alone, you will get robbed." <laughs> <laughs> and then they pointed, "See up north that street. If you walk down Harvard by yourself, you will be robbed." <laughs> that's what this was like. She was like, "You will be sued." Yeah, no, yeah. it was it was it was awesome. Yeah, if you eat a hot dog, you will be sued. Mm-hmm. It's like why it's too phallic. Someone's gonna sue you if you eat a hot dog. Um, do, but do you want to tell the the top five story? Which one? Well, just, I mean, the basic setup was like, so we're on this thing. Everyone's like rubbing our shoulders, being like, you're going to be huge. That's you're right. Be huge. Saw it. Oh, yes, yes. Go, yeah. you finish it. You do that story. Right. And then we, like, a month later, like, the fucking ball drops, and suddenly we're like, nothing. Nothing. And then two months later, we both get hired onto top five. Yeah. And I have a uh, Chris Rock movie. Just right. I had audition yeah. with five lines, and then it became one line, and then I was cut out of the film. Yes, yes. You had auditioned for a role. I was just for five roles. <laughs> Um, and, uh, I got nine of the five and they sure. offered me a stand in role. Uh, so I got to be a stand in and then it kind of worked out. You were fake Chris Rock when Chris Rock wanted to be behind the camera. Yes. I would. Yes. You, exactly. you would say the dialogue. You would occupy his space. I would play Chris. Right. I, there's one scene where I put on one, the, the bear, the bear head and do cocaine, line of cocaine. <laughs> oh, yeah, off the, right. That was yeah. my hands dancing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so I got, I get, I got, I feel like I got like two or three jokes in. In the movie, which made me feel good. But the, but the scene I was at, you would audition for something, and then Josh called you up and was like, hey, I don't know how this happened, but somehow they thought you were auditioning for a stand-in. 
So they offered you the role. Yeah. Wasn't that what happened? It was something sad like that. They yeah. were just like, uh, they were, <laughs> they were like, we kind of negotiated a deal actually, more or less like, all right, if you do this, then we'll give you a little like, give you some FaceTime on camera. Yeah. And and you know, oh, they, they said they were gonna give me a line, so I ended up just okay. getting FaceTime, which was. Yeah. It was fun. I was my ego. Let me tell you, my ego was low. Like I really, like, you get to play. You're one of the actors in, in one, the Nat Turner movie, Nat Turner, right? Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But but also, I mean, you got to fucking spend two months with like yeah. all the best comedians alive. Right. Once I got my ego out of the way, I realized right. like I, I mean, there were scenes where like uh, there were parts where Cedric the Entertainer would talk about the Kings of Comedy tour. No, I actually knows what happened. I was sitting with the writers because Jeffrey Joseph and a few other writers I know we were sitting talking, and then Chris would come over because you know. We're all equal for some reason. And uh, we're just talking shit. And all of a sudden, they're like talking about the, the Kings of Comedy tour, which I'm, you know, obsessed with. And then and then Chris was like, you know, let's ask Cedric about it. And so we all get up from the table and walk over to Cedric the Entertainer's table. And Cedric tells a story from the, you know, that, that's the kind of day it was being. I was like, this is fucking really awesome that yeah. I can hang out. And then like, what's his name? Um, Rosario Dawson's mom is really loving. And so she cooks like food sometimes for the entire crew. That sounds great. And, yeah, so, and the, food great. Was, yeah, yeah. the food was like, this is Lon's design. It was amazing. And so, you know, I'm sitting between Rosario Dawson and Chris Rock, and her hot mom comes over, and I get up for her appeal, ma'am. And, you know, you know, I'm Googling her mom. Yeah, her mom, like, her mom's funny because her mom was like, you know, the son's actually prettier than the daughter. And, like, <laughs> like and, yeah. and I asked Rosario about that. She was like, yeah, yeah, it's true. Look at my, look at my brother. And, uh, yeah, he's, 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 he's pretty, pretty hot. Man. He's pretty, <laughs> pretty hot, hot guy. Like, I mean, they're not exactly inaccurate. <laughs> it's a beautiful family. Let's yeah. say that. Nah, and then, like, yeah, you get random advice. You get to smoke weed with, uh, what was his name? I said, I don't want to say name. Okay. Point being, yeah, they, I, 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 uh, I know, I know I'm, I'm being all serious now, but that was a, I thought if you take your ego out of the way, you learn a lot from just not being an actor first and just watching motherfuckers, how they fuck up, how they do well. Yeah. Habits. And just go like, no, you have no stakes. You go, oh, okay. This well, is fucking good. I right. think this movie's hard to talk about because it essentially doesn't exist. It's like vaporware, right? What? The last airbender. Like, it yeah. feels like it doesn't exist yeah, as a movie. It, and it came out, no one wanted to talk about it, it was forgotten, like, it that's it. It very quickly made it's a like, ton of money. It made a ton of money, but, like, I feel like fans no of the show it. are just yeah. like, let's just forget that ever happened. It's weird, let's man. Let's just forget about and that. And then movie. they just did Legend of Korra, and we're like, we're reclaiming the legacy. Like, now, you know, the, sh- the cartoon series had ended, it was going to be live-action film series, that is aborted, and then they're just like, new new cartoon show, new cartoon have show. Have you watched that's that? Like, I haven't watched that. I haven't watched it. I've heard great things. I don't care. You don't care. It's just because you love the show. I love the I show, but I don't. I would have thought you'd gone to Korra. I don't, it's not that I'm sexist. It's just that I didn't think. Like, it's the same problem with Star Wars, where it's like, well, well, if she's already a fucking Jedi, what the fuck am I coming for these next two movies for? Like, so, if you've so already figured it out. Is that okay. what Korra is about? Like, I, I don't know. She's she's whatever like, she is. I don't know. The first one, Airbender didn't know what the fuck's going on. He was learning for three yeah, seasons. Yeah. This one, she's already knows what's going on. So mm-hmm. I'm like, well. And it's Korra's supposed the to be his great, great. She's yeah, like great the new heir, like a hundred right? years but later. But she's from the bloodline, I think, yeah, yeah. from his bloodline. Well, they like reincarnate. Yeah. Isn't that, it's like the Dalai Lama. Yeah. That's like who he's supposed to be. It's like they yeah. give him some objects, he picks them up, and then he's, he's right. The but Avatar. fucking Star Wars, this bitch figured out how to be a Star Wars <laughs> chick in one scene. You know, we did not like, even a whole movie. We, we did like forty episodes. Yeah, of Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. and that was the lamest Negro. I shouldn't even go on that campaign. <laughs> All right, all right, I'm sorry. This movie does remind me a lot of the Phantom Menace trilogy, though. Yeah. In the same way where there's, like, yeah. so much going on. None of it is of any emotional import. Mm-mm. There are no characters you can care about. No. And it just becomes white noise because there's, like... And there's and it keeps... Because, ha- all right, the worst part of this movie is when they finally get over to the other water city. Yeah. And then they introduce that princess girl who's got, like, white hair. Oh, right. Who, by and the way, I look her up. She She's Mexican. So oh, even when he crazy. cast people of color in this movie, he made them look like albinos. So that it like didn't count, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Everybody can be white in this movie. <laughs> yeah, everyone gets a shot, <laughs> but yeah. you know the movies. Unless like... you're bad. <laughs> yeah, she, wow, look at her. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, right, she... if you look at her, like if you look at like pictures of yeah, her, she's like, like a right. brunette, like a. Ooh, yeah, she's hot. Um, and but the no, film she looks. Yeah. She shows up, and they're like, "Oh, whoa! Here's a big new character for you." And then she dies like 15 minutes later. Like, Th- it's crazy. This was the thing I, I was going to say. she's a big yep. character in the cartoon. Um, or at least she's in the cartoon. Actually, she's introduced in the cartoon like that, except you just have more episodes to lament exactly. on her. But, like, yeah. she, like, lives for four episodes versus Four episodes? 15 minutes. Is that's a movie. That's a long time. You it's know? a movie. I just remembered the thing I was originally pulling right, up, right. okay? Because so, this connects this. There's a lot of fucking weird narration in this movie. Yeah. But yeah. it's like... Well, it's like... Post yeah. editing, like... Exactly. We, and and then sense. we went over here. Yeah, a lot of that. But it's like over scenes that you could tell were clearly supposed to originally play out in full. Where she's like, we went to the temple and met all the elders. And Sokka met the, the princess. And they immediately hit it off. Right. And then the yeah. next scene you see them talking, they have a relationship. And we miss the stuff. 
So in this interview, this was an interview that Vulture magazine, uh, Vulture of New York magazine did with M. Night, like the Friday the movie came out, right? And they said, Airbender's running time is only 104 minutes, which isn't very long considering it's an adaptation of a 20-episode first season of a cartoon. So it's 10 hours he's condensing into 90, 104 minutes with 10 minutes of credits, right? Was it hard to pack everything in there? This is M. Night's response. And so if you go by the guy on the message board, which I'm inclined to do, he's just doing damage control now. Like he's spinning, you know, whatever. Shoot. I'm dying to make a two-hour movie. I just haven't earned it yet. Wait, that's what M. Night said? What? What does that mean? What? He's definitely made a two-hour movie. He made nine movies. What are you <laughs> talking about? All his movies are fairly short, but... Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I'm really tough in cutting, and I have a style that creates a certain pace and a way of writing where I try to get nuances in one scene this that helps other scenes. This is just a lie, scenes. though. That's just this, him. Uh, this you doesn't even make do sense. do, like, a Christopher Donner cut one day where he's just like... Oh, this yeah, where he, this here, is the here's the real hour. thing. And he cuts together the audition the, tape so yeah. that you have the original <laughs> script in there. Because that's what the Donner cut does. Yeah. It has, like, screen tests as part of the scene. That yeah. Superman 2 made so much sense yeah. in the original draft. You're like, oh! Really good. Kind of. I mean, except for the spinning planet thing. Go ahead. Uh, he says, uh, I get, try to get nuances in one scene that help other scenes. Don't even understand what that means. It creates a very similar pacing in every movie. Six Sense, Unbreakable, Signs, and I believe the village were all the exact same length. That's not true, I'm not. No. That's, that's empirically that's just untrue. Him just, that's just him covering his tracks. He's saying, like, what am I? It's like kind of like when he said The Happening was a B movie. Yeah. He's like, ah, I make these cheap little movies. Like, I'm sorry. I just did the same thing. I, I only know what I can do. Like, that man's good at branding. Let me just say this real quick. Yes. That is a yep. Brandon King. Like, yeah. He is. I mean, I need to get down that shit. You should team up with M. Night. You should I definitely. Ooh, yeah, team up with M. Night. I mean, I can do it myself. I mean, <laughs> oh, you just want to be the new M. Night. I could do, I don't know if the M. Night. I could be a white version. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Who's the white version of M. Night? I'm going to be that guy. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm being ignorant. Just uh, just do the first half of M. Night's career. Yeah. And just stop. Like, that's what you want to imitate. You want to yeah. stop around the village. I don't know. I like the ebb and flow of a career. I might be, I, might, I like to throw some out. Well, this is like an ebb. This I is, guess this it's is, about, it's starting to flow again, maybe. maybe is he? Yeah. What has he done lately? He did this movie last year that people liked called The Visit. There you go. How yeah. old? Yeah. It was a cheap? Cheap. Yeah. Self finance. I'm Cheap. telling you, five million bucks. I'm tell he out under- of pocket. I'm telling you that shit. That's the shit. I'm telling if he could just keep making things yeah. of high quality, right. you will work. Keep I working. mean, that's probably the lesson he learned with this movie, right? Yeah. Like enough. I cannot like just like have the studio have so much yeah. control. I fucking yeah. hate cooks in my kitchen. Like, I hate that. I hate being an actor. But I ain't gonna lie. Like I'll do it. <laughs> I like, love the money and tell me what to do. But I fucking have better ideas than you. That's all I always think. Like, I got a better version. But he does one more movie before he realizes this, and that's with Will Smith. Yes. And that's probably after like, Earth. the that's most the, meddling. That's his next Will movie. Will Smith was after Earth? Wait, the after, just, yeah. the uh, Will discuss, Smith, Jaden Smith. Did you discuss this already? Week. No, uh, I haven't even yeah. watched it. I've seen it. That was his last big budget, right? Yeah. Yes. He didn't want to. Do, I, th- I bet you something did happen. That's why he oh, did yeah. do a small things. He's you like, got to imagine Will Smith's the kind of star who, like, he's just there's a lot of meddling on every level, right? Like he has to exert a lot of creative control. And yeah. that was also the movie where he was trying to like make Jade in the new Will. Yeah, like, that's right. Force. He was like, passing the torch. So to it was son. like a big brand management movie where they were like designing it to make the audience love Jaden as much as they loved Will. It's annoying because you can't you can't create a star. Uh, you, can't, you, no. can't, you can't give something they somebody somebody something they don't want either. Can't give this somebody a title. They got to get gave it yeah. a belt. I also, uh, I don't know if you listen to You Must Remember This, which is a really good uh, podcast about like old Hollywood stuff that mm-hmm. David and I listen to. Good podcast. Uh, Karina Longworth, who's a great film critic, does this podcast. She talked about like MGM and the old Hollywood star system and Louis B. Mayer. And he had this quote where he like, and he, of course, was a guy who like created stars, like found people who had a look, who didn't have acting talent, who were like a background dancer or a rodeo clown, or whatever the fuck it was, Mm. and then, like, molded them and, like, shaped them and created a backstory and changed their name, and then, like, slowly, because it was the studio system, like, we'll put them in four films in small roles. Like, we can place them in movies and position them. And he would say, when people were like, how are you so good at making stars, or discovering stars? And he said, I don't discover stars, the audience does. And it's like, the trick is, even if you are handing someone a star, you have to make the audience think that they found this person organically, and they want to like them. You can't fucking be Nicola Peltz and have your dad, like, pay to put you in the movie. You know, you can't be, like, the kid of the guy and just be like, come on, we assume you, you should like this person. Right. I, I like, rapping, to me, has really shown you how you introduce a person. They don't do, I don't know if they do it as well now, but in the 90s, I was, like, literally, like, a good rapper 
kept appearing on rappers' yeah, right, songs. Right, you right. Yeah, who is this guy? Right, right. Right. Oh, that's a good verse. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the old like studio system. You make them part of the tapestry, right. so then when they finally and get then, their like solo album, you're like, I'm ready. And like the solo album would sometimes be like, oh, it's like Dr. Dre knows this guy, and like he's producing this album, like right, like they'd be packaged with a famous person, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, you just can't just be famous for no reason. I can't just be. Yeah, I can't it give happens, you two though. hours. I can't People give you two famous hours for no reason. It happens. I'm just saying you can't give two hours to a motherfucker. I don't know. Not. I'm 34. I can't wait. How long will you give? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't watched a comedy ah, in a while. Yeah. Have you what? watched the last fil- comedy film? Comedy film? <sighs> yeah, nigga. I mean, it's... Do you, you count Deadpool? Yeah. Yeah. Deadpool was Fight Club. I love that shit. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> it like was Deadpool. Fight, it was Fight Club frame for frame. Yeah, 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 yeah it's very fair. similar. Yeah. 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 Not even fair. Yeah. It was exact. Yeah. exact. They, yeah. only, they only took out was Edward Norton, but they made Edward <laughs> Norton... <laughs> And Edward Edward the same. But no, his flashbacks were basically Edward Norton. Yeah. yeah. So it was basically yeah. he was Tyler Durden and fucking Jack. It was and Marla and the first opening credits. I was like, yeah. oh shit. I love how much we don't want to talk about this. We really don't want to. I don't want to talk about. But here's what I'll say also. I we should think, talk about Dev Patel for a second. We have a couple things we, we to talk about. We should definitely talk. I and do, Asif Panfi. I do think, yeah, we should maybe just go through the performances. Sure, I do think yeah. that everything we're talking about is thematically linked because it's all about this, like, idea of having ownership of your, like, voice and the sacrifices you have to make in a career and how you like don't lose it um i you know there's there's a common trend where like if a studio has a movie and they really think it isn't working and they're just like we put a lot of money into this we just got to make our money back they just cut the shit down because they're like we can fit in more show times that way if the movie's fucking 80 minutes long we get more showings in per day we make our money back before people like know about it i guarantee you that's what fucking happened with this movie the one last thing I want to read from the Vulture review before we go uh, through performance for performance. They go, uh, uh, have you read the reviews for Last Airbender? And he says, no, I haven't. And they say, well, are you aware of the reviews? And he says, no, actually. That, I mean, okay, okay night. And he, the interviewer has to say, well, uh, for the most part, critics have not been kind. Sure. Uh, are you just ignoring them? I mean, will you read them this weekend? Have you just not had time? And he responds with, are you saying that in general they didn't dig it? Ooh. And the interviewer goes, oh, in general, no. Uh, Roger Ebert, who liked The Happening, did not. Uh, the first line of his review is, The Last Airbender is an agonizing experience in every category that I can think of. That's brutal. And others <laughs> still waiting to be invented. <laughs> so how do you react to something like that? And he says, this is like, I think, you know, if this the whole point of this series yeah. is to try to figure out who this fucking guy is and what happened to him. Why he was good when he was good. Why he got bad when he got bad. How he can be saved if he is, you know, on the upswing now. I think this is like the purest dose of M. Night we've ever got. He says, I don't know what to say to that stuff. I bring as much integrity to the table as humanly possible. It must be a language thing in terms of a particular accent. A storytelling accent. I can only see it a certain way and I don't know how to think in another language. I think those are exactly the visions that are in my head. So I don't know how to adjust it without being me. It would be like asking a painter to change to a completely different style. I don't know. And then they said, critics have been, haven't been been kind to your last couple of films. Do you worry about reviews? He goes, I think of it like an art form. So it's something I approach as a sort of immovable integrity within each of the stages. So if you walk through the process with me, there's not a moment where I won't, that I won't treat with great respect, respect. So it's sacred to me, the whole process of making a movie. And I would hope that some people see that I approach this field with that kind of respect and that it's not a job. All right. I do agree that you look at his films and it's like, I do think yeah. he respects film a lot. Like, I agree, except for this one. I think he gave up on something, this one because he couldn't win. got out of his hands with this one. But he's still like, I mean, when this movie's terrible, it's terrible in a way where it's so self-serious, it's so lifeless, and it's so sort of arch. It had, no, but he's no, never no. like fucking throwing it at, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it never feels like, it's sloppy, but sloppy in a way that's kind of weirdly meticulous. It feel, no, it feels like a movie that every, it was too many cooks in the kitchen they yeah. have no direction i think when you have too many voices and no vision it's, it's, like you have that's what happens like, you said lifeless that's the way to put it yeah yeah I didn't you know have a soul there's no character to this movie okay so the plot of the movie and it is... wouldn't make any sense if there wasn't a cartoon series no absolutely you would no be sense. like what is this shit it would yeah. be like battle earth or battle battle or battle earth yeah we're yeah. just like what is this whole world yeah. that is what are you supposed to exist yeah yeah um, so my uh, uh, entire plot of the film, they find a boy in a block of ice. They say that he's the last airbender. They mm-hmm. try to get him out, and then the other people try to take him. At the but end, there's of the like movie, elements. So it's like there's the water people. They bend waters. The fire people. They're like conquerors, and they shoot fire at people. There's the earth people who are Asian. 
uh-huh. the East Asian. East Asian. Brown. And, and yeah. they, no, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, the, the, the no. Earth people, yes. Yeah. The fire people are, yes. Yeah, the the right. Earth people are right. East Asian, but we don't see much of them. And they yeah. get, like, conquered. Or we see, they kind of rise up. And, yeah. eh. and then at the end, like, the fire people try to conquer the water people, but then they beat them back. It's the Dalai Lama. He's supposed to be a reincarnation of this thing. In the cartoon show, he was a little boy. And part of the fun was that he was figuring out who he was, but also his innate energy was just of an excitable small child yeah. in this environment where everyone's putting all this on him. And in this movie, and trying to take out the humor, they make it just like... Yeah, and they keep saying, like... Like, because like, part of his story is, like, he he ran away, right? He's, like, anointed, and then he, like, flew away. They told him about the sacrifice he'd have to make. Right. That if he became the, the Avatar. Right. Which, by the way, they had to remove Avatar from the title because this came out a year after Avatar. Right. Um, that he he became the Avatar, he'd have to, he wouldn't ever be able to have a family. It's like joining the priesthood or whatever. And so he so runs he flees, away. flees, and then his whole tribe gets wiped out, he wants I guess. To, but the, the implication is because he wants to be a kid. Like, he wants to live his life. And then the movie him, doesn't do that. He never acts like a kid. No, no. And that's like almost the easiest part of the movie is just like, oh, find a have kid who fun, but they acts don't have like a fun. kid. Yeah. It always actually reminded me of another horrible movie called uh, In the Wild. Was uh, you know what I'm talking about? With, um, With Sean, the Sean Penn movie? Penn movie? Oh, yeah. You, saw you that? hate that movie? I, I like that movie. Really? I yeah. like that movie too. Oh, I hate every drop of that movie. Uh, because <laughs> that might be a real white people movie. <laughs> that's a, I might yeah, say that. No, that's yeah. a, I think it's a real definition. Yeah. I hate every drop of that movie. <laughs> every drop of that movie. I thought it was yeah. a real white male prop. Like it was. Yeah. I thought a white male. Yeah. Only yeah. because I hear that. Only yeah. because I was waiting that entire movie. Going okay. There's a good reason he left his house. Oh, there's not a good reason. No, no, oh, no, no. There must be such a solid. And just because his dad had a, the courtesy to have a second family on the side and fucking keep feeding your dumb ass, <laughs> you got to go in the fucking woods and die. Fuck you. <laughs> what I like oh, about I that movie him. is oh, I think that. that movie knows he's stupid. I think, I think so, so too. But oh. I know I see your argument. Uh, the guy's because pretty you're just like, oh, yeah. why do I care about this yeah. guy? Yeah. Like, you know, he not only what you just said, but he like goes into the wilderness and he's like, I don't know, I'll eat these berries, I guess. Like he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, he really and you're just, just so dying. frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you fucking picked a trailer in the middle of the fucking Alaska <laughs> frontier, and you're wondering, oh my god, am I going to live? No. Well, every dis- He runs into Kristen Stewart. She's like, let's let's have sex. He's like, ah, I don't want to. He well, runs I into find like, that Vince Vaughn. He's like, let's hang out. And he's like, ah, I don't think I can hang out. Hal like, Holbrook's he- like, I want to be the father that you wish you had. And he's, and like, he's like, like, I got to go. Like, I got to go die in a school bus. Because <laughs> <laughs> my dad... Had the common courtesy to keep feeding me, even yeah. though he didn't want to. He had other pussy. He didn't want to keep feeding <laughs> I me. I totally but he forgot did. about that. That asshole movie. put me through college. <laughs> it was a he go- goes to college. Yeah, it's a good soundtrack, and he got him a car. He oh, got yeah. him a car. Eddie, yeah, Eddie Vedder. Yeah, the, Eddie Vedder. The song. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh man, people. I just remember this one dude on Facebook. He was like, but so that movie reminds Maybe you of the Last Airbender. I mean, yeah, I mean, yes. Because <laughs> it's just a kid where it's like, well, what's your problem? Yeah, what's your problem? You're oh. a magical kid. Yeah, yeah. you're floating. Really going to float away? <laughs> just own it. Because of your burden? Yeah. <laughs> and there is some dark implication. That it's like, yeah, his whole family, his whole airbender tribe yeah. got wiped out. All the monks got killed because and, he wasn't Oh, we there. should talk about, well, no, we shouldn't talk about it, but he keeps, like, talking to a dragon. By the way, oh, yeah. in the cartoon, he didn't do that. In the really? cartoon, he didn't really? run, cartoon, he did not run away because he was mad. In the cartoon, he ran. He was like playing around with sure. the thing, like and walking it's around. It's more then, coincidental. And then like a storm happened. Oh shit! And then right. and then it was like it was, yeah, it was more like oh fuck. So well, they're trying like to the give the whole him because, character was but, that he was fun, right? They're yeah. trying to give him this emotional arc in the movie, which yeah. the dragon eventually, because he talks to this like spirit dragon, says like you need to confront, like you need to accept what happened to you and like what happened to your tribe. And that's when he, like, does all his water power. Even though he walked in a fucking graveyard of yeah. all their skeleton We've bones. we've been doing this. Yeah, yeah right, there's skeletons. What the fuck you think I'm here for, nigga? <laughs> and that happens literally the last five minutes of the movie, and then yeah. the end is M. Night does the thing he was clearly building up to by rewriting. I didn't know that the backstory was that he ran away because he was, like, playing and chasing a butterfly instead of, like, it was like being a brat. Big, it wasn't yeah. a serious thing. It was, like, not even, like, he was not a big build-up. I think he had fights like that, but it was, like, not a, he was just in the, he was just happy to be floating. In the North, or North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> the way they tell it in this fucking movie is that, like, they had the ceremony where they were going to make him the Avatar, yeah, and everyone like, bowed, bowed down, him. and yeah. he was supposed to bow back. And instead he was like, Oop. Yeah. Oop. And, like, like just Flew fucking away. snaggle pussed out the door, I right? Do that again. I don't remember that part at all, and I wasn't smoking weed at the time. It's a flashback, and it sucks. Yeah. In your defense, it's hard to remember any part of this movie. Yep. Um, but uh, then at the end, the fucking last image is everyone goes, like, this new tribe that he's saved with the princess who died is like uh, they're like oh, hey yeah. we want you to be our avatar and then a billionaire's daughter is like we all do and then they all bow and then he sort of bows back and that's yeah, that actually happened in the show sure 
Well, yeah, probably I'm, works better. It in could the show. be earned on the show. Yeah. Um, so we we used to be a Star Wars podcast, and we started doing this thing when we were a Star Wars podcast called Report. Ugh, Jesus Christ, it's so hot in here. Performance review. Performance review. Oh, the air conditioner right there, dude. It is on. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh. This I know. is a week weeks long saga, man. Yeah, uh, we would go through the cast to try to figure out whether or not the acting was good in in the movies, right? And I think it's a foregone conclusion that the acting overall Everyone's is not bad. good in this film. But I think every remaining interesting point we have to say is tied to a specific actor. Okay. Well, do you want me to just run it down? So yeah, I want to go through this cast. Yeah. yeah okay. No ringer. He played Ong. Okay. Kid's clearly kid. not an actor. No, he's bad. He was a martial artist, right? They watched the tape, and they were like, oh, he's so good. He's like, yeah, he's got the thing. But it's like this movie doesn't really have him do martial arts because it's all just him moving his hands around and yeah. the CGI going around him. Right. So they don't need a kid who's a martial artist. It's not like it's a Bruce Lee biopic. Yeah, he's not fighting anyone. Like, like there's no contact. You could have hired a dancer to do it because you just need someone to hit really strong poses. They hired him because he had the look, like you say. Yeah. Like you said. He, he dressed for success. But he was... Uh, too old for the role as written, mm. and he was super white. Yeah. Dev Patel is Zuko. Okay, I think this is the only good performance in the movie. He's all right. What do you think of Dev right. Patel? Um, as Zuko, yeah. He's supposed to be angry. He was too old, too. I mean, everybody was just too old in the movie. Right. Like, because, like, all no. the problems were child problems this is the, on the, these adults. In the, and in that only the, works in rom com. In the show, the fire <laughs> people are Chinese. Their names yes. are all Chinese. They kept the names. Right. Like, Zuko, Zhao, like, you, you know, these are Chinese names. So uh -huh. I don't know. I mean, obviously, they're going to keep them. But, like, yeah. it's a weird decision. I've seen the cartoon. He is younger, uh, Zuko. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess Dev Patel's supposed to be brooding. It, it's yeah, okay. The he's his, okay. His dad, his dad, fucking yeah. He's he's, he's his dad cast him out because he's like not tough enough. Basically. He's trying to prove his dad wrong, which is a relatable storytelling trope. Like it's like a it's a classic theme in storytelling, and so it works better than anything else in this movie, just because that's like you know elemental. Uh, and I think he's an actor of some subtlety. So those scenes, he's not just doing mustache twirling. And there's like you feel a little bad for him, but it's. Not a very well written character. No, because he's just he just his whole motivation is if I kidnap this airbender kid, yeah. then maybe I'll prove myself right. But they keep grabbing him and then he just flies away because he can fly. Right. They don't really address that at all. I think he's the best performance by default. He's also the only so. person who I think feels like a human being in this movie. I think Sean Tube's pretty good. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, so let's yeah. As the Uncle Eero. Yeah. Oh, the uncle's great. Yeah. yeah he's he's good. great. He's great. Yeah. Uh, and he, what a fucking great actor who never yeah, gets credit. Great actor. He's the dude in the fucking He's cave Iron with Man. Iron Man. The dude who, oh, like, inspires Iron yeah. Man to become Iron Man. Yeah. And he was the guy, the, the fucking He's guy the racist, who sells the guns. shop owner in Crash. In Crash, who tries to shoot Michael Pena. Oh, yeah. He's one of these dudes yeah. who's, He's like, had around. key roles in all these big movies, but he always and looks so cast different. And as, like, a bunch of different types Every race, in Hollywood. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's weird, man. It's like, like, the more I get into this business, I realize there's, a, there's respect in the same. Yeah. And I think I was looking for, I, I was mixing him up until a couple of years ago. And I was like, oh, I think I'm looking for two, those are, I think I want more respect than I want One fame. more respect? I love that you're opening up about this so much on this episode because it like makes the episode all thematically like rich about this entire quest of like wanting to be the artist you want to be and oh, not absolutely. have to make The Last Airbender. Oh yeah, I'm, I, I, that's the only way I can keep this conversation going. And uh, <laughs> and B, no, I, I like Bullets Over Broadway. We brought that up. That that movie scared me for such a long time because I was like, what if I do give a fuck? Because like John Cusack's yeah. character, it's like I want to be a writer, and at the end he goes, oh, I can't do this shit. Yeah. But he figured it out way too late in his life. Yeah, you know, he was in his forties right, until right, he figured uh, it out. And I'm like, that that and Ed Wood, two of the scariest movies ever. Yeah, to like not have it and not know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love Ed Wood. Uh, Ed Wood's yeah, one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. Oh, it emotionally affects me too much. It's like City of God, basically. Man, I can't watch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. Nick Lapelt's Jackson Rathbone. We don't need to say anything Whatever. about those kids, Whatever. right? Yeah, they're bad. Ja Jackson Rathbone. They Rathbone, read their lines. Jackson Rathbone's an actor I don't like. I've seen all the Twilight movies. He's is he in anything else? Uh, I've only some seen other the first shit. I've seen him for like a second. He's really fucking posy. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's always sort of like standing at an angle, and he he has this air of like I think I'm really handsome, and I'm doing you a favor by getting to look at my face. And it's always like eyes really wide open, lips pouting at angles, I very mean, still. He, he has one mode and he delivers every line. He's it? fine in this movie. He usually irritates me. Nick Lapeltz is fine. Yeah. They're both fine. But it's like no one who's carrying this movie you actually uh, care about. Asif Manvi as, as Zhao, as the evil command Zhao. I mean, I feel bad for him. 
He's going for it. He's going for it. I like Asif Mambi. Just, I didn't realize he was like the main villain in this yeah. movie. He's like the only villain. He's in like this the story. Darth Vader. Yeah. Well, because I thought from the advertising that like Dev Patel was the villain, but he's like the conflicted like I anti. I think in a world, Dev Patel is supposed to be like the Draco Malfoy, right? It's right. like the yes. the villain who who lots of people like, like yeah. you know, like a whole subset of fans are into. I yeah. guess he's probably like that in the show. Uh, Zuko. See, like you know, he's over. sympathetic. Um, Zuko, which one is Zuko again? I'm the, sorry. the prince, you know. Uh, the no. fire guy. No, yeah. he's just super pathetic around the end of season two. Okay, it okay. takes a while, sure. No, it takes right. a while. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, he goes, he goes back and forth, back and forth a lot. Right. Like, a, like, a, like a fucking 16 year old. It's awesome. Right, right. Yeah, cool. Cool. Then, that's he gets, a- then he gets some pussy in season three and it really calms down. <laughs> it's really, it's really cool. It's really like natural. Which is how it often is, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. You're like, oh, right, that's what all this energy was about. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. I had I when I was bang it out years real old. quick. I used to get some. And then you get older and you learn masturbation really does most <laughs> of that work for you. You get a good conversation, get your hand going. Right, sorry. But there's that thing when you're a virgin, <laughs> you, masturbation, you can't settle for masturbation because you're like, what if that other thing's so much better? Mm-hmm. And then once you've had sex, you're like, mm, I can get most of what I... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just reading this now. The dragon is a composite of four characters in Jesus the cartoon. Christ. I guess, does he talk to, like, old avatars in the cartoon? Yes, he does. Uh, I see. I see. Yeah, so yeah, they're just like... sort of making the dragon that. Yeah. Just this random dragon. Yeah, they're like kind of like taking, I think, they might even saw Naruto. You ever seen Naruto? No. Naruto, you Naruto? he goes yeah. into his head and talks to his big fire fox a lot. Yeah, but I think Naruto, I hope they don't make a movie of that. See, you know, Jap- <laughs> see, Japan does it well, like anime. They actually just make independent movies that right. have nothing to do with right. the storyline. Yeah. Just right. take the characters, take a big problem, yeah. and have them solve it. Right. And it's like, oh, that's how you should do movies, as yeah. opposed to this whole... Right, try to make a 36-part story into a two-hour movie. But yeah. also, like, the fucking show exists. Why do you need to make it again? I mean, you said... Because live action, because people I are know. like, whoa, yeah, I mean, what do you... Yeah. But you but- know what, that's why I kind of like Netflix. I like, I kind of like what... Not, I, like, I have problems with Daredevil, but I like... The, the the effort very small yeah, budget yeah small budget action here like especially because like in the seventies it was done so badly mm-hmm. like remember like Spider Man yeah. you know yeah yeah the live rope, action Spider Man yeah rope on his belly and yeah. they just pull him up a building and he just flail his arms you know they, they're better than that now. <laughs> that's that's the thing like I don't think Daredevil I have problems with Daredevil as you said yeah. but it's like I like that it's low stakes in a way like yeah. because it's a fucking TV show not a movie he doesn't have to save the world right oh. they can spend no episodes portal in space that right. opens up yeah and episodes can be about his fucking legal cases in the way the comic book was where it's like the thing you were saying about the day to day thing day-to-day. like part of what's cool about superheroes is seeing them go through all these fucking arcs and like the things that are boring and the things that are exciting well, we're and- saying what's good about TV yeah. Right, but this is a movie podcast. Yeah, I'm, saying, I'm yeah. saying that Avatar movie could have been a live action TV show, even though that would have been annoying. Or they yeah. could have gone. Here's the basic fundamental idea for this. Here's what the characters are. Let's write a new story. Write a whole new story. Rather than right. try to adapt right. specifically, let's take the idea of this thing and come up with an arc that can be completed within or, 90 minutes. Or, or like at the end of the arc of it, because like at the end of the whole show, you mm-hmm. know, him and Zuko become best friends and old wise people. Start from there. Right, start from there. That could have been a whole new start. From one more there. problem before I die. Yeah, and then. <laughs> You're That's, never gonna make people happy, though. I'm right? gonna, I can't I mean, wait to start pitching movies. This is, I'm gonna pitch everything in that voice. All right, I got a movie, okay? <laughs> Avatar goes into a bar. <laughs> I remember when the the one day I worked on Top Five, where it was a scene that is now part of a montage at the beginning of the movie, where he's doing like a Q and A for a bunch of college students. And Charlie Rose is interviewing I him. Seen the movie? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I originally, I it's barely in the film, that. and yeah, I'm yeah. not in at all. But I asked one question, and he was behind the camera when they were filming in the audience, and all these different kids had to ask questions. He would be behind the camera, and Seaton would sit in the chair. Charlie Rose wasn't there because he was wrapped for the day. They, like, shot all his stuff first. And so it was Seaton having to, like, replicate the, the jokes that Chris Rock had been delivering all day. Yeah. And I'm in the last row of this, like, auditorium. It's the okay. New York Times Oh, Art God, Center. you bring up that story. Oh, and Seaton's God, on stage. Story. And we're texting back and forth and looking at each other and just going, like, it's what crazy. the fuck is right. going on? But there was a point where you, like, texted me and you were like, I don't know if I should be doing the Chris Rock voice or not. Yeah. Like, you're like my... Because they wanted me to do his jokes. Right. But then they started correcting me on how to tell jokes. Oh. Because, like, I have a habit when I tell... I'm on stage all the time, so my habit is, like, when people are laughing, I'll, like, keep talking to keep them going. <laughs> and they, like, the AD was like, Seton, say <laughs> the joke, let them laugh, <laughs> then say the next joke. It was like one of those, like... Okay. All right. Well, breathe. breathe. But that was the other part of it was like your job was, hey, we're getting reaction shots of this audience laughing. So you have to make them laugh. If you can actually be funny, it makes the results of the film better. Yeah. And you're like, well, these are Chris Rock jokes. They're not Seton Smith jokes. Yeah. Do I try to translate them into my voice and still try to make them funny? 
Or do I get up here and like do a Chris Rock impression when Chris Rock is standing two feet away from me? Yeah. And you just kept on texting me. Like I check my phone, I get the text, I look up, and you just looked like you were about to cry. Yeah, I wasn't about to cry. I just looked miss. I was really high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's I. That was the one. If I ever, if I die of an overdose, mm-hmm. uh, I know my drug habit started on that set because that the crew was were more than willing to give you like drugs. Like, hey, you want to get the drugs? Start smoking. And I started making brownies and giving the security guards. I started. Um, so there was a whole like transactional sort of empire going. on I mean, I'm not. There were, there were, it wasn't a buy sell thing. It was more or less like you know, hey, y'all got weed. It's just everyone's <laughs> moving it around. <laughs> yeah, like, we ain't doing nothing. <laughs> it was one of those like it was, like it was it was a chill. It made me want to go. I can't wait to make uh, a movie. Uh, I can't wait to be like it. Look, it was the coolest. That was a, this the coolest set I've ever been on. Of course, as I know, offense was the girls Lena Dunham. She makes that set just gold. I hope she would invite you one day. Uh, we were talking about it off mic. Let's yeah. talk about it on mic. <laughs> Never auditioned for the show. Come on, Lena. Yeah, Give, there's one season to go. Yeah. Come on. Oh, is this the last season, season six? No, the next season's going to be the last season. Season six or season seven. The one that's Seven's airing right now. Right now we have six. Okay, one so they're more they're producing one more season. Yeah, yeah. But look, I don't even want to throw that I think this is season five. This is season five. Because I'm in it, right. so I know that. You uh, might be right. <laughs> humble brag. Right. I'm humble. Humble brag. Well, fine. Then the, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in the season yeah. finale. Six, six is the last season. It's the last yeah. season. Yeah. Damn. Um, You're in the finale? I'm in the finale, yeah. Can you tell us what you play, or is it? I play a storyteller, and we get into a fight in the, in the line. Ooh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. I know it's it's. Uh, I don't. You know, I, you don't get very many cool credits because being on a sitcom, like you got to explain it. Like I'm on a sitcom. What channel? Fox. When? You know, you're like, <laughs> right. who's in it? When, yeah, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. when was it on? Was yeah. it off now? Like you know, I could say girls. Like, oh, I know that. Yeah, it's yeah, great like, when you only have to use one word to tell people what your job yeah, is. Yeah, no, like SNL people, they don't have. Like, it's, it's really cool to be like SNL. I didn't say it, but I mean, I I look at their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they look happy, uh, you know, for a minute. Not the whole job. The job is miserable, but but the minute where they have to tell someone's relatives what they do for a living, they look happy. When you don't have to explain your job to a relative, oh, that, that, is, that is, is a beautiful feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't have to do that anymore, right? They they know your job. Now I don't know. I mean, people my age know. I well, we even said this on podcast. The last time we recorded was an hour before oh, right. the news was. It's official. broken. The news is broken. Uh, but I I'm I'm gonna be on the new uh TV version of the Tech. Yeah. Uh, playing Arthur. Amazon. I feel like anyone of our general generation they know, but I feel like to my parents' friends, right? Your like, parents don't know the tip, they don't, they don't but know. they know. But I can the tell Amazon them I'm playing a superhero shows. on Amazon, and yeah. that will sound like something real to them. You right. know? Sure, yeah. Sure. Sure. That will. Whereas two years ago they'd be like, "It's a TV show on a bookstore. What are you talking about?" Yeah. Now I can say like Amazon, and they know. Yeah, they know yeah. that Amazon has. Right. Yeah. Mm. Um, that is people know vinyl, right? People know you're on vinyl. Yeah, vi- vinyl like, works because that's, that's an HBO show. Wait, what episode? I, I, did I see you? What episode did you do? I'm, he's in. I'm, he's I'm in most in of all of them. I just I'm pretty hidden. <laughs> okay, I'm a li- I'm like the Where's Waldo of vinyl. Okay, are you yeah. in every single one? I thought you I'm were in all the one. one. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. you're one. in the record company. Yeah, I have a mustache and I get yelled at. I feel like I saw you and I just didn't because like my girl gets annoyed because I see you have so many friends on TV right, and, you're like, ah. <laughs> and I scream now and she's like she gets so annoyed and now she's finally starting to see friends on TV so now she's yeah. not as annoyed but at first it was really like come on and so I probably have to suppress my joy when I saw you. Um, but I, I saw you in the fucking other movie and you were the best part of it. Oh come on, stop it! Um, what was that movie? Fort Phil Tilden? Fort Tilden? Yeah, whatever. I'm Killed gonna... it, Fort Tilden. Yeah. Yeah. Killed that opening. You so were like, hey, script, you mind now, nigga? <laughs> I did, yeah. I, I worked in a lot of Fast and Furious references. <laughs> you know, that's a fun fact. In the opening of the film where they're like, oh, look at those cute boys over there. And I'm saying something, but you can't really hear what You're it is. I'm explaining the, the chronology the of the Fast yeah. and Furious yeah. movies. And I go, it's 7-4. Yeah, like, right, right, I'm literally right, just right. numbering them in order. Yeah. Um, well, this is not what I want the podcast to be about. I want, Yeah, as this I said, has turned into a Griffin Newman retrospective. I like it. No, but I don't like... I don't you like, would have been good in this movie. You would have been better than almost anybody in this yeah, movie. I, don't know. I wish you'd gotten... the. Uh, the, the Jackson Rathbone part. That's the 19. I didn't yeah. really do anything yet. Uh, we should say this movie made a lot of money. Made a lot of money. Opened to 51 mil. Yep. Fourth it's of not- July weekend. Can't shit on that. Yep. Can't shit on that crowd. Nothing wrong. It, it ended with, it dropped. it dropped. As all things do. But it's at really. 130 domestic. 130 domestic, about 370 worldwide. I mean, I think it was Nothing one of those wrong movies where they didn't really lose money on it, but they were like, we will lose money if we make another one because no one wants to see this Right. Again. They didn't lose money, but it wasn't what you really want, it's which like is Spider-Man like on a Broadway, franchise. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or Spider-Man on Broadway. Yeah, they survived. Made. They survived. Yeah. We all live, really. Right. In the long run. <laughs> I love, I thought, God, this is maybe my favorite episode of the podcast. I just like, I like thematically <laughs> well, the larger well, things like, we're getting uh, at. The episodes we've been doing recently, they're all different. Yeah. Yeah. Like M. Night Shyamalan's filmography. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, that's the other thing to say, though. 
this is his what fourth movie in a row that basically is like a huge bomb. Yeah, it sweeps the golden raspberries. Not mm-hmm. that we like those stupid things, but like. But he made a bunch of movies he hates, and now he's made one good movie he loves. I'm going to go see that movie. See, see, Seton's, like, trying to, like, you know, like, sort of, like, put a bow on this. Well, like, I, you know, it ends nice. Know. We I have mean, to do one more bad episode before we, we get to, to that upload. We have to do After Earth, and then we get to do the movie that we get to liked. do the good one. Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. But as an artist, you just, I just know, know that, like, it's an ebb and flow, and you just got to keep going. Because, I mean, like, I love Clint Eastwood and Woody. It's just. They keep yeah. making movies, and they've had parts where people get ignore them, and then they kept making oh, yeah. movies, and then people come back. loved them. And yeah, then, when if you make them that consistently, and then people sometimes yeah. will go back to the movies they ignored and be like, you know what, you yeah. made a couple good movies. Yeah, my like- dream. I realized I was walking today, and I realized my dream in life is to make a chunk of great work. Like my dream, like I like what Bellini did. I like like the latest stuff I've done, and I want. I, mean, I want to get like I don't know, 60, 70, make movies, and then mm-hmm. kind of do something else for twenty years, mm-hmm. become senile. Uh, in a house and go like, oh man, I ain't got nothing else to do. And they'd be like, well, you, you want to watch some of your old movies? Fuck, what did I do? And I'm like, oh shit, that was oh, funnier wanna, than I thought. Yeah, you want to read a I want to make a good discography for me to die to. But yeah. I have no memory of. You want to watch it fresh. You well, want to make the work that you would want to see and then get old and see all enough that you, you can watch it. I don't have to be completely see now. I mean, you like hit your head and then you like wander into a town and you're like, who am I? I don't know who I am. And they're like, I know you. You were on a TV show. And then. See, and I don't want the fame. Down. I just want to enjoy my work again. Well, but I mean, just the, 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 <laughs> I want to enjoy my performance. You get to rediscover like, it yeah. for the first time. Yeah, I want to do that. At 90, if I make it that far, yeah. maybe 80. That's a good point. That far. You'll make it that yeah, far. Yeah, Trump will be in his 14th term, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the water will be lapping up. We'll, uh, we'll all be drinking Trump ice. Yeah. We'll, ooh. The rivers will run with Trump ice. You see Rachel Maddow recently had a great article on him because she compared this election to the Goldwater election in 64. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I, I mean, well, I, didn't I know see we're talking. I didn't read the article. Barry yeah, Goldwater yeah. took over the uh, primaries, like yeah. the similar, like Trump. Right. They had KKK following movement him and, like, conservative, every, and everybody was freaked yeah. out by him. And then Lyndon B. Johnson, being really the most darkest uh, political minds ever, he uh, didn't do any debates with him at all, and just did the weirdest series of commercials. You know, you the, seen the, the some Daisy of those commercials, no, the, the Daisy commercial. But, did you see the one with the guy? Awesome commercial. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Now I was I was watching that commercial recently. That is a performance. A great performance. That I want a great. Performance. I would do that as a monologue. I would yeah. put glasses on. You Have see you seen this? No, no, it's this great old political. Ad. It's like six minutes long. No, it's four. It's four but, minute four minute monologue but commercial. Like for an ad, you're like, this was on TV. Like this, whole, it's like so long. As, uh, it, it's just basically a monologue of a dude explaining how he's a Republican. He's, he's like taking his glasses Johnson. off. And he's like, I just don't know. I, you know, it's like a real. Just, yeah, like 1960s monologue style acting. He yeah. even smokes at the right moment. <laughs> it's just like he lights it at the right moment. He sit there and he pause and you go, damn. I bet you it was like 400 takes of that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. Because it's one single shot. Yeah. You no, know, it's, it's unbroken. Fucking... So your point is that's what you want to do. You want to do one piece of work someday. Yeah. Le- at that level of yes. quality. Yeah, I want without just, Donald Trump. That's the yeah. goal for all of us. I want to <laughs> yeah. make, like, 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 like somebody told me this shit once, like Kira Kurosawa. I was like, you, you like him? He's like, yeah, just watch any of his movies. They're right. all great. Yeah. I want somebody to say that about my shit. Yeah, you can't can- say about me, me, motherfuckers. Well, no, but uh, look, I say this and not just because you're my friend. Thank you. I, I, do th- I haven't said the thing yet. Yeah, Hold I'm, on. I'm still going to accept it. I, I do think you're one of the best stand-up comedians working in the country right now. Oh, I truly guys. believe that. Man. Yeah, nice uh, and I think every time I see you, you you have advanced so far beyond because of the standards you hold yourself to, and how much you care about the work. You're constantly tunneling deeper and deeper into the types of things you want to say, and how you say them, and how you perform, and marrying uh, the writing and the performance in a way that I think few people do at the level that you do. Oh man, thanks for saying that. Yeah, yo. I have no question in my mind. There's no doubt that you will have the body of work that you hope to have, and you will be able to uh, watch it all once you've lost your mind and, and not oh, remember yeah. that you. Wrote. Yeah, I may even lose it quicker than I think. I may not make it seventy. <laughs> I really don't know why I think that. <laughs> I mean, if you're 45, drinking, 45. if you're drinking that much during the Fox Run, it's. I wasn't even nervous. It really <laughs> was a boredom drink. I was like, I ain't got nothing to do. I might as well drink. It wasn't even like I need love. <laughs> it wasn't even emptiness. Well, I'll say this. Okay, so last uh, bunch of weeks on the podcast, I had started this thing. I was starting like a public campaign. Like a petition to try to get oh, yeah. cast Beyond in, Fast, in and Furious. Fast and Furious 8. Yeah. I really want to be in the cast of Fast oh, and man. Furious 8. I feel you. And still very much a goal, but now I, I have the tick, which obviously was just means to an end. I mean, I you know, that was so I could leverage that into getting in Fast and Furious 8. So now I have the momentum and hopefully that will work. Good luck, man. But I, I you know, I want to use the time that we would devote to that on the episode to yeah. when you text me with the congratulations about the tick news, yeah. you said there's there's a combo character that you have always fantasized about playing. Oh, freaking And I yep. <gasps> Freakazoid. Oh my god, I can play Freakazoid, nigga. Oh. Oh. And you even said that to me. Like, I remember in one of those part car talks, we were like, if you could play any part, what would it be? And I was like, Spider Man, and you were like, Freakazoid. Like, Freakazoid. you've had that answer ready for years. years. That episode. Loved Freakazoid. The show, man. the first pilot episode of Freakazoid is genius. It gets really off the rails later, sure. but that first one is just like, 
oh, it was like a superhero who's like the world was very concrete and he bounced around. And that's how you're supposed to make movies. Like, I mean, that's how, like, Beverly Hills Cop, that's what made Beverly Hills Cop genius. He just, right. his funny advanced the story. It's like a perfect structure. Um, Let's I, throw that out into the yeah, universe. I want, yeah, I want that. To Let's happen. do fucking do live yeah. action Freakazoid gotta, reboot. You build up yeah. enough cred or whatever power, and yeah. then you're like, all right, all right. I want Freakazoid. Give it yes. to me. Yeah, Freakazoid. And I think I want to make like a Herald and the Purple Crayon, but that's one later years. Oh, that's uh, that. That'd be incredible if you pulled that off. Herald and Purple Crayon. I loved that when I was a kid yeah. so much. My Herald mother is a minister. She did on like she did like a whole sermon on that. Really? Yeah, because basically it's a metaphysical argument right. that you control your right. world and your destiny. And your destiny, oh. yeah. You're such a good guy. <laughs> oh, no, wait, we gotta hang See, out it was more. very nice to have you yeah, on the podcast. It's nice having you on the show. Um, Too bad that this movie just completely sucked. It gives me something to do, man. I've been in my room like just writing a lot. <laughs> I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't been human. You came I, in with a notebook. You got a full notebook of ideas. Oh, yeah, I gotta yeah. work on my uh, act more. Like, I figured out a good system to work on my act more. So, like, I... I just wrote this kid's pilot script, and so like I have, I had to, I had to remember how to do stand up again. Oh. You got like I didn't realize you had mode. Sure, yeah, I've been mode out of switching. Gotta jump back in. No, you ain't got it. You gotta go do your TV show when you start. And the next month, end of April, beginning of May. That's pretty crazy. That's so cool. They though. cast the ticket? No, no. And I'm not just saying that. I they right. literally they have not, and I don't even know who the people are who are close to getting it. But I did get the email last night about my costume fitting this week, and it was like, oh, that that feels real now. Mm, like, they gotta, have to make a superhero suit to my stupid body. You got to put a lot of lubriderm on them nuts, nigga. Right? To make sure you I was that thinking about that. Because here's the thing I haven't told anyone about, like, on the production side of things. I got IBS. I'm usually pretty good at, like, fucking scheduling around it. Sure. But if I'm in, like, a skin-tight suit. Yeah, how do you suit, get that off? And, like, mid-take, I'm like, hey, do we have, like, two minutes? Can I run to the bathroom? Right. Is it, do I have the time to take the suit off and put it on? I don't know. Please write in with your thoughts. Blankcheckpodcast at gmail.com. You got yeah. single cam, and so you yeah. could. Single cam, yeah. you can just pull that dick out <laughs> right on the side of the camera. Because it's going to be Wild Wild West. I love single cam. It's just Wild Wild West. It's just like, it's like all rules. We got to shoot illegally over here in this little booth. Go pee over there. Hurry <laughs> pull, up. Pull that dick out <laughs> on the side of the camera. <laughs> Multi-cam was so much more official. Like, yeah. there's a bathroom there. The office is there. And that's what Brian know. Cranston would do on Breaking Bad. Famously, he'd always pee. On the camera operator's leg. I don't have time for this. Yeah. Not true. Um, <laughs> Seton, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Is there anything, anything you want to plug? Um, no, nah, I think the girls thing is there. Uh, yeah. It's I mean, like girls. It's like it's I mean, like girls. Char- oh, I did a little spot on characters for my friend Natasha Rothwell. Oh, oh yeah. 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 That hit Netflix this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Natasha Rothwell is one of the best. Yeah. He's awesome. I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, we started improv. I didn't start improv. I started improv after her, but the same school. DC. Okay. Uh, she's great. You're both great. Yeah. Uh, watch that. Uh, also, just uh, jump in now on the ground floor of Seton Smith. We'll have one of the greatest careers yeah, in American history. Get on board. Yeah, man. If, uh, I'm not sure which network's going to say yes to my TV show, but just happen. tune in. It might be a bidding war. Yeah, Fucking it might be a bidding Netflix war. Netflix Freakazoid reboot 2017. I'm calling it now. Oh, that'd be great. Because I have to change the character. First, he's white. I could change that, but he's like, he's already a teenager. He, he's like blue. That's isn't what he? I was going to say. Like he's blue. blue. Yeah, who cares? The blue is, but I'm talking about the original guy. But I mean, yeah. I could change that. Yeah. He was also a kid. I got to figure out how to get around that, too. But you know what? This is, feels like the mask. I feel like the same, same structure. Right. Right, you can do right. it. I you're, believe in a, you. a, you're a living cartoon in like the real, you know, in a real world, right? Like that's what Freakazoid yeah. is. Yeah. Freakazoid is. He's yeah. bouncing off of, like you said, bouncing off with that fucking nice suit. Uh, tweet at your local uh, senators and tell them to uh, uh, put a Freakazoid reboot into development with Seton attached. Yeah, that's how it works. Uh, tweet at us. Uh, email us. Mm. Um, uh, feel free to listen to our the other podcasts on the Used to Be Comedy Network. Sure, definitely. Subscribe, uh, view, all that, rate and review. Uh, yeah. now here's the thing about all those podcasts. They're all produced by the same man. Oh, yeah. He hasn't spoken. He's been sitting in a booth in the room next to us. <laughs> he just He's... coughed. Yeah, hey. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi. I don't think he saw this coming. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, hey, uh, listen to our shows. Ben, did you like The Last Airbender? No. Did you watch it? Yeah, no, I watched it with my roommates, and I could not pay attention. And yeah. Got distracted. I don't even know actually how it ends. How does it end, guys? He bows. He bows? Yeah, he bows. The, the, the boats leave. Yeah. They turn around. Did you get any good work? To- oh, at the end, they have the fucking cliffhanger thing with the sister. What? what? There's the cliffhanger thing with the sister at the end of the movie where they go oh, to Zuko's she's dad. she's going to be like the new And he's like, you got to take over. And he's like, can you do it? And then they cut her and it's a lady and that's supposed to be a big it's twist. Summer Bichil from right. uh, Towelhead. I feel so bad for her. They like brought her on. They were like, okay, so you have one line yeah, in this you're gonna film. you're going to be in two. You're going to yeah. be all over Last Airbender yeah. 2. Yeah. 
Why is she feeling bad? One day at work, I pay like a motherfucker. That's yeah. true. She probably God. made, yeah. One yeah. day at work. You work. have the right fucking attitude on everything oh, in this yeah. industry. Well, this is the thing. This was a bitterly bad negative movie, and Seton has kind of guided us towards like positive thoughts yeah. throughout this episode. Oh, a lot can be learned. I mean, when people get paid, it's not that bad of a world, all right? Yeah. 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 Everyone happened. made some money. Everybody made money. You, you know, know? and they're gonna be able to make... even lose any money. No, nobody whatever. got died in the eighties. Motherfuckers used to die. All the time, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> so. Helicopters <laughs> chop people's heads off. Yeah, in the eighties didn't happen. So, yeah. shit. Everybody lived. Everybody yeah. got paid. I've I've spoken to some people worked on crew and and said it was it was fun. Sure. Right. It's just nice. it was just a movie. Yeah. I got to travel to. Yeah. Good movies and bad movies. Yeah. Nobody could tell when you're on the set. It feels yeah. the same. Well, sometimes you'll <laughs> see some amazing movie and you'll hear it was like a nightmare to make it. Yeah. But what you know, and you're like, wow, they made a great movie. But yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. But you know what the thing is about getting to be in a in a really bad movie. You still got to be in a movie. Right. I didn't get to be in a movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's insane. That's a business of love. It's that's not a business crazy. of business. Yeah. I only ever auditioned for one movie. What movie was? It? Nobody's fool. You auditioned for nobody, the Paul Long Newman time. movie? Paul Newman movie. When I was like seven years old, they came to my like my elementary school. Play what? And to play the kid. There's like a kid in the movie. Wow. Yeah. I talked to some guy. I don't know. Wow. Wow, shit. Yeah. That was it, though. That could have been C. I was almost in the Woody Allen uh, series. Oh. Oh, in the Amazon one? I was almost there. Wow. I got to meet him and everything. What? Damn. That was cool. Okay, we got to end on that. Can, is there, can you tell any story about meeting him? Um, no, it was really as small as possible. Like, I, 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 everybody keeps telling me that he's like a nervous, neurotic mess in the corner. Sure. Nah. It's like calm, right? N- it was completely in control. I walked in. Yeah. He's like, hey, how you doing? Can you sit right there? Uh, all right. Done. See you. It was very quick. You read the right. thing you Yeah, read, read it cold. It. I was like, all right. Blah, blah, blah. And I, I think I tried to put a character on it. I should have been a supernatural. I made a mistake. Uh, but. You're on the radar. Oh, yeah, I mean, it was two, it was two sessions. They said it liked me. Hey. It was fun. Sure. I liked it. For me, it was like. He, he makes a lot of stuff. He makes you a lot know? of stuff. Yeah. You know, I've, in the last three years, I've literally met almost every one of my heroes. The only, like, I've been in the, either met or been in the same room as everybody. Yeah. You know, I, that's fucking queer. I realize me. I have one on the list I haven't met. Who? Steve Martin's like the only person I'd put at yeah. that higher level who I haven't met. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I said one thing. He was actually, I mean, be, for us, it's a painful memory. He was supposed to be in episode 16 of Melania. He was already scheduled. Are you serious? Jeez, yeah. damn. She, oh, my God. Oh. Number 14 was Bill Hader and 16 was going to be Steve Martin. It was oh, actually, my like, God. They fucked up canceling Melania. What was he going to play? I don't know, but like. I know the ratings were bad. Or they also fucked up I like firing Mulaney. Griffin Newman from Melania. No, totally. No, it was completely. It was really all karma. It was up. karma, really, for firing <laughs> you. I mean, when I see you, the you ever seen uh, Simon Rich in person, though? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just was thinking when I see, like, oh, that's why I cast you. Yeah, it's yeah. similar. Right. Yeah, because he was very much with Simon Rich, and he mm-hmm. said, you know, like, oh, okay, all yeah. right. And then two different networks were like, that guy doesn't make sense. Well, because it was just two Mulaney's. He was, he was giving you all his lines. It was <laughs> yeah. made no sense. Yeah. And then it was, uh, yeah, I should have made you the, the friend outside and come in. Or you should have just dated him the scene the whole time. Um, I mean, like, or, Look, you know, life led us where it led us. You know? led, we're all in this sweaty Can't room. We just leave minutes ago. Can we get out of this? Yeah, let's get out of yeah. here. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you all for listening. Here. Uh, we're going to go. Uh, uh, next week, next after, week Earth. after Earth. Uh, James the Third? James the Third. James yeah. the Third from the Black Man Can't Jump in Hollywood yeah, yeah, podcast. He's awesome. Um, uh, thank you for listening. Yep. Uh, rate, review, subscribe. Yep. Uh, email us. Uh, sign my Fast Ape petition, but I'm also on a fast track now. I'm, I'm going to be fine. Oh, you're on a Fast Ape track? Uh, yeah, I still haven't gotten my Sony PSN account unlocked, even though Sony now uh, has employed me. They're producing the tech. Well, uh, I should get on that. Um, Probably don't want to talk shit about your bosses, man. Yep. It's that's not all a good he does every week. Uh, that's my running bit. Seton is going to continue eating a salad. And... I'm going to finish this motherfucker. I'm get my calories <laughs> it's a big on. salad. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a big man. It's a big I'm, salad. I started doing kung fu. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as always. And as always, big thanks to Producer Ben, a.k.a. Purdue Ben, a.k.a. The Ben Deucer, a.k.a. The Poet Laureate, a.k.a. The Haas, a.k.a. Mr. Positive, a.k.a. Birthday Benny, a.k.a. The Tiebreaker, a.k.a. The Peeper. His name is not Professor Crispy. It's not even a nickname, a.k.a. Uh, Producer Ben Kenobi, a.k.a. Kylo Ben. Seton's Seton leaving. has picked up his salad. He's put, he's here, stretching. Unplug my computer. David's unplugging here. Yeah, there we go. David's Producer packing ben his Kenobi. stuff back up. Seton, Seton's contemplating his life why, why he was here in the studio. And 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 as always, a hearty hello final for all of them. This has been a UCB Comedy production. Check out our other shows on the UCB Comedy Podcast Network.